A questo punto inizia la trasmissione. Tutti i partecipanti sono in grado solo di ascoltare. We are live. I will wait a couple of minutes to start to uh, allow people to connect. It's at 10 o'clock sharp now. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Uh, how many people are connected already? 72? 72, Fine. yes. That's okay. Uh, whenever I can start uh, the, the, the workshop and then uh, take a few minutes before all people join to the core of the, of the session, okay? We are 80 people now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's wait until 10.03. And then at 10.03, Fabio, you put my slide on. So I start. Eighty-four. Eighty-five people. OK. Shall I go? Vado Ilaria? Yes. Go, action. Good, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rest for Africa, Rest for Med uh, Foundation uh, webinar on uh, Egypt. I am Roberto Vigotti, the Secretary General of this uh, foundation. You may remember me, some of you, when we started in 2012 with the Rest for Med, and now we grow up and we, can be, we are becoming in, in connected to the whole Africa continent, but it's always a pleasure to be back to the origin and be, be Italian, Italy, Egypt, and we are two, two the most important empire in the world, so we know each other very well. The only place where I get a, a real maze is when I go to Egypt, being from Roma, you know, thinking about ruins, thinking about the culture and things. So it's a pleasure because um, uh, we, have, we are now, we want to um, report to Egypt, the Egyptian um, framework since uh, it is uh, the, very clear that the Egyptians have made a, a strong effort for the new um, integrated sustainable energy strategy, which will allow a coexistence between gas and renewable and efficiency to make sure I understand that Egypt will uh, reach 42% uh, by 2035 in terms of uh, renewable and generation of electricity. So this is really uh, a, a success story where Egypt contributed so much together with Morocco, I think Morocco, Egypt and South Africa were the three African countries who were most uh, I mean, uh, pioneering the introduction of renewable. Uh, in my association, you will see in a moment, uh, uh, next slide, I think, next. Um, we, we start from this, uh, uh, which is right for everybody. On the right, you see uh, the blue in blue up the four economic uh, demography growth urbanization process also very strong in in egypt rising and young population and demand increasing for uh, uh, satisfying access to energy and 
potential renewable. Those are the uh, factors who do favor renewable everywhere in Africa, of course, in Egypt. On the, on the bottom, you see there are three main issues still uncertain. We want to try to help to solve the sustainable bankable project development. Uh, Egypt made a lot of progress, but we can do more. The enabling policy and regulatory frameworks, which is exactly what we're going to discuss today, and the adequate financing support. Also, this one, you know, we are very active as a foundation in the issue of the risking investment. We are now asking the European Commission through a project called Renew Africa to make a sort of European scaling solar, something much higher, much more complete, covering wind, bioenergy, bio uh, geothermal, and also covering a grid connection. Because uh, unfortunately, we always, always speak about renewable sources, but very seldom we speak about infrastructure and connection, which are the 50% of the game. So it's like you speak about cars, uh, Ferrari, BMW, the Audi, you don't speak about freeways and road. So I think uh, even the IEA underlined that uh, for each dollar or each euro you, or each pound you spend in renewable sources, you spend the same amount in infrastructure and uh, uh, grids. Uh, this is something we want to stress. So on the left, you see this is an incredible picture. In 10 years, uh, 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 renewable made a huge progress in the world, but in the 10 last years, only 2% was in Africa. This is something shaming because Africa is a blessed with So why only Morocco, Egypt, maybe South Africa, a few other, but because they, all the things we have been doing there are, do not have much impact. And if you think that in 2% is also included hydropower, you see that still solar and wind, the new renewable, are still there. So this picture is very dramatic, and that's why, why we need to push a European leader, African leader, of course, worldwide leader, to apply for the risking instrument and for sustainable bankable project, because the ambition are there, but they're not to be seen if it remains only there. So this picture for me um, is the why we are uh, entering in Africa. Next slide, Fabio. Now, very quickly, I go on the, on, the, on the who we are. Our mission is indeed to create an enabling environment for investment in Africa. Most of our members are private sector, but altogether, you'll see we are uh, representing most of the European say, leadership in terms of energy. And the vision is to contribute to the road towards a prosperous Africa. We want to work, let me be not polemic, but clear, we want to work in Africa, for Africa, and with Africans. Or any other uh, uh, scheme to export uh, whatever, it's up to you guys, Africa, not to us. Unfortunately, nowadays we go back to desert tech ideas with the hydrogen from to Europe. I mean, we have to be less selfish. The African need to decide the destiny of the energy sources. If, if they want to export anywhere, fine, but don't dictate them what they have to do. Next one. In next one, we have the what to do. Well, we do a lot of a program and strategy. By the way, you can read all of these, but I assure you that everything we do is on our website. You can download everything. I was told, uh, being a former researcher, Mr. Vigotti, there's no more patent. The more people know about what you do, the more it's better for us. I mean, previously, when I was a researcher, I was very jealous of my data. There is no password in our website. You can download all our uh, work streams and our results. Next one. Now we have now have, you see a much broader, you see Professor Lafayette, we had at the beginning were six, seven company. Now we have all kinds of, uh, of people from wind manufacturers, Imes Gamesa, to solar manufacturers, Soltec, to cable manufacturer, Prismian, <coughs> and so on. And we are having now like NG, uh, ADP Renewable from Portugal, Nordex, uh, Schneider, Electric and Vessel. See, we are getting uh, more and more because we are connecting the dots between Europe and Africa, not anymore between a few companies there. So I'm very proud to say that this is a, um, a, a result that we reached in the last uh, two, three years. That's why we are and more and more, not only a net bank from Africa, South Africa will join, but also Greenco from UK, uh, they want to join other company because we are carrying the common uh, values for promoting in Africa. Next slide, Fabio. Now, just to tell you the country-specific program, I mean, this is a, the list of the main uh, activities we carried on in the last uh, three, four, five years. Uh, and you will see for each company, for each country, we, we tailor-made the, 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 the events or the publication. 
So please, uh, uh, in Egypt, uh, we are very proud to have been on the pioneering uh, just a few years ago, but we like to have much more there. In fact, Ilaria has the mandate, together with my members, a you to uh, identify where are the topics where uh, Egypt would like to be uh, also involved. We have done the same just a month ago with Morocco, with the Minister of Morocco. So we want to go back to you, Egyptian, and we can provide you the list of things we do with other companies now, other countries. You can say, okay, Roberto, why don't we do something on e-mobility or on um, storage, whatever. So we are ready to respond to the needs of the, uh, of the Egyptian uh, authorities agency because we want to find out what is the added value we can give. We don't want to cover everything. So please take a look at this one. Next one, final one, I think almost final. We have the list of the publications. You see all those publications from flagship publication on, on the first one on the left is uh, Scanning Up Africa Power. The second one is uh, Water Energy Food, you go ahead. And we have all these publications you can easily go and download in our, uh, from our li library if you go in our website. So I think we, and they can, uh, we can also ship to you uh, sometimes a paper copy. But I do hope that in, in addition to the old Egyptian one two years ago, we can add more study and Ilaria will be uh, a res responsibility to address you, to provide you a range of, of, of um, activity we're doing. But we are very proud to see all these uh, stamps, I call them, around because again, is any, any webinar we do, usually we add value a new publication. So next time we go to the Egyptian, uh, audience, we want to have uh, a publication on Egypt. Next one and final one. This is actually what Ilaria is doing for us. She is very active in the MENA region, uh, both on a regional approach. You see the survey on uh, the, the risky investment for Mediterranean country and the MENA platform. And of course, so we have the Morocco issue where we active in energy connection, in transition, in certificates and missing link to Morocco. Plus, the ministry asked us to work on electrification, digitalization, energy, flexibility, and now the next one, it has asked us to do a webinar on immobility. In Algeria, we're still waiting for the things to be clear, but we do, we'll do certainly a webinar with Sonar Gas on PPA bankability. In Egypt, of course, uh, this is one that today we are doing, but then we want to update the energy, Egyptian country profile and we want to have also the result of our missing link Egypt, which is a study done with UNECA on the regulatory and policy uh, framework of Egypt. More next time. In Tunisia, we will do the, uh, the decentralized routes. We do believe that uh, commercial and industrial application and decentralized approach is also very important, the same as much as the centralized power plants. So those are more or less what Ilaria is, uh, is, uh, is um, uh, managing. So I hope that you can help Ilaria to enlarge the Egyptian uh, role there. So with this introduction, why we want to talk to you, but many of you know why, I, I think the last one is my name, my, is it the connection, uh, Fabio, next slide, the final one, I think, yes. You have the, the, the website uh, uh, characteristic and, and the meeting. So now the old, the old meeting will be chaired by a friend and a, a very talented person like Professor Afet El Samawi, which I thank so much. He was, uh, I mean, if you don't know him, you, you just get off of the, of the link because El Samawi is the voice of not only of, of Egypt, but he's the voice of, of the Mediterranean. So thank you for accepting to chair this meeting and, and guide and challenge the player, and I will be attentive to your until 11.30. Thank you so much. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you very much uh, for your kind introduction. A very interesting uh, uh, journey for Rescue Africa in Africa. Dear friends and colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name, uh, as Roberto mentioned, Hafs Salmao. I'm a professor for energy engineering at the Gizhi University in Egypt. Uh, first, sure, I would like to thank Press for Africa uh, for inviting me to moderate this important <laughs> webinar on progress of power and renewable energy market in Egypt, investment opportunities and challenges. Renewable energy in Egypt has shown tremendous development over the last previous years. This is include a wide spectrum of action, starting with the uh, integrated and sustainable energy strategy for Egypt till 2035, uh, which is combined renewable energy master plan, uh, development or enhancement of the legal and regulatory uh, as well as contractual framework 
uh, um, codes, technical codes for interconnection of renewable energy uh, projects as well as operation of the grid because this is imposed uh, as share of renewable uh, energy plants increase on the grid. This is imposes some kind of challenges for the operation of the grid. So codes already have been introduced. Um, also, uh, 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 many procedures has been put for uh, project development. The most important uh, things about this development is that many of them or most of them has been developed in collaboration with uh, uh, developers, private developers, as well as international financial institutions. The results are some very important projects like Benban project, which is uh, one of the largest, maybe the largest, uh, uh, PV complex in the world uh, in one size with a capacity 1465 megawatt. Also, substantial installed capacity of uh, uh, wind energy, specifically those developed by private sector. There is 250 megawatt plants by private sector and another one under development, in addition to 2000 megawatt of project in the pipeline in different stages for development. Also, regarding solar, uh, there is around 1,000 megawatt uh, under development uh, in different phases, including 200 megawatt, which already has been contracted and in development. This is regarding private. This is all of them are principally will be done by private sectors. Uh, yet uh, there is NARIA, which is New and Renewable Energy Authority in Egypt, which represents the state and usually it contribute uh, in order to achieve the target, but the uh, main objective is to attract as much as possible private investment into the business. Uh, Naria has now uh, over 1100 megawatt of wind plants, uh, basically in two large wind parks, uh, one in Zaparan and one in Gabal Zayt on the Gulf of Suez. Also, they have uh, 140 megawatt uh, hybrid uh, combined cycle CSP plants with 20 megawatt CSP fuel. Uh, Nowadays, uh, uh, as Roberto mentioned, that uh, according to the strategy for 2035, it's expected that 42% of Egypt energy will come from renewable. Uh, now, it's going activity for extending and developing the renewable uh, the energy strategy up to 2040. Uh, the good things of this is that coal will not be there as a part of the package it's really one of the good things that prices for renewable energy as it has been dropped it gave much more share for renewable energy to the mix and expected that around 60 percent of the energy generated in egypt by 2040 will come from renewable energy just to give an example we talk about around uh, 20 gigawatt of wind capacity close to 40 gigawatt of PV uh, capacity, around uh, close to five uh, gigawatt of CSP uh, plants. So it's substantial uh, capacity need to be added over the coming 20 years, which need a contribution for sure of the private sector because it couldn't be done uh, by uh, the government. Uh, now, today we have six distinguished panelists uh, uh, are kindly accepted to share their experience regarding uh, the renewable energy in Egypt, uh, regarding mobilizing investments and challenges which is facing uh, reaching the target. Uh, actually, they represent different disciplines. Uh, they include officials, uh, regulatory, transmission system operator, legal uh, investment advisors, and contractors. Uh, uh, we will go uh, to have Q&A session at the end of the presentations, uh, I encourage all of you to forward questions uh, to our panelists benefiting from long, their long experience. Uh, we will try to cover as maximum as possible of your question according to the allowable time. Uh, you have a tab at your screen called questions. Please use this tab to forward questions. And uh, if you have, or if you have would like to forward this question to specific panels, please mention in your question that this is directed to the specific uh, panels. Now, uh, let me go to our first presenter, 
Uh, actually, our first presenter is uh, Mr. Uh, Hassan uh, Oskok. Uh, uh, Mr. Hassan uh, has been working for Mediterranean Energy Regulator as, uh, as uh, Association Deputy Secretary General since March 2018. Uh, prior to Mandric, he occupied the position of sector manager for energy at the delegation of the European Union to Turkey, managing reform process, implementation, and follow-up of pre-accession development, uh, monitoring, coordinating the programs, projects under EU financial assistance to Turkey. Uh, before, he served as a senior uh, gas expert head of hydrocarbon for the energy community secretariat in vienna uh, uh, also uh, he has been uh, 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 after graduation he joined the petroleum pipeline corporation potash in turkey since 1994 as a natural gas engineer he was invited to the energy market regulatory authority emra uh, which is the regulator in turkey during its established in 2001. So he one of the founder of this important agency and was involved in the preparation and implementation of uh, the implementing legislation of natural gas market law. Uh, uh, Mr. Hansen has uh, an engineering degree uh, in metallurgical and materials as well as a master degree from the Middle East Technical University uh, in Turkey. Uh, uh, he will talk to us about the role of the regulator and precautions for regulations in promoting and creating functioning, secure, sustainable, and competitive electricity market. Mr. Hassan, the floor is yours. Uh, many thanks, Professor Hafez. Uh, good morning, buongiorno from Milano. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, thank you, uh, Res for Met and Res for Africa, particularly to Roberto and Ilaria for their kind invitation to have Medrec on board in this very important webinar today. So basically, I am going to talk to you and share with you my experience on the role of regulators and the impact that regulators can make in the energy markets, particularly in the electricity and gas markets. So in order to start with my presentation, uh, I would like to start with a kind of anecdote that I had many years ago. I mean, it was 2002 or 2001, I don't exactly recall. I was in a conference in uh, Leipzig in Germany, and then uh, they were talking very slowly about the renewables. And then that was the first time that I heard about the renewables. And uh, the president of uh, World Bank, connected through a video conference to this uh, big international conference, I very well remember that he said, basically, renewable energies are a romantic story. Forget about it. Even if we use all the potential that we have today, it will count less than 10% of the total consumption. Frankly speaking, being an engineer, being an expert in the field, I was a bit amazed, I was a bit uh, surprised with his statement on the renewable energy, but I just forgot it. After 20 years today, so we all see and we all go through this, is not a romantic story, it's a real story in the market. And I also personally believe that it will change the future of world and the future of the energy markets today. So basically, uh, I'm not going to into the details of the Egyptian uh, energy markets, particularly the electricity markets. And I see that there are a lot of speakers who are going to talk on the details of the energy markets in Egypt. That's why I rather will focus on the role of regulators and impact of regulations, regulators in the markets. So uh, I can now start with my presentation. Next slide, please. So basically, what is MEDREC? MEDREC is the Mediterranean Energy Regulator, regulators representing 22 countries uh, with 27 members. So our main objective is to promote a harmonized, non-discriminatory, 
uh, regulation in the in particularly the Mediterranean region with a view to create a competitive, secure, and sustainable energy markets. So, in order to reach these main objectives, we have a long-term strategy which we can group in five different segments. The first one to have a sound institution. regulatory framework in the Mediterranean region. So basically we aim to have one and the national legal and regulatory infrastructure is in place. This is the first objective. Secondly, we would like to create the optimal condition for the investors. So all the countries are interconnected, particularly in the gas and electricity market. The new incentives are in place, particularly promoting the renewable energy sources along the energy efficiency, of course. And we also would like to really see the, an increase of renewable energy in the total energy production. Third one is the functioning to create a kind of functioning uh, and competitive electricity and gas markets in the region. So uh, in the end, uh, we, which will allow the cross-border trade is in place in the region and the, all the countries are interconnected and interoperated with each other. And then the transparency access to the information is also ensured and increased as well. The fourth pillar is the intensifying the regional cooperation. Uh, this is a very important pillar, I would say that in the end, <clears throat> we believe that through the regional cooperation and collaboration, we can increase the efficiency and the security of supply. So basically, in that respect, we are planning to develop pilot projects and are set up them to test them. And in the future, in order to improve the cross-border trade, we need this kind of pilot projects. And final uh, long-term strategy or the target is to uh, protect our, let's say, the consumers. So whether these uh, consumers can freely choose their suppliers as now the case in the European Union countries. And also, of course, to protect the vulnerable consumers and uh, to, to, to see the development in this respect. Next slide, please. So, uh, as you have already mentioned, uh, Roberto, there are different and uh, have as different challenges uh, in order to really integrate the markets. Uh, we can also group them into three. So, the first one is the physical challenges. I'm not going to into details, which is related with infrastructures. Structural and institutional challenges are the second one, which is related to co coordination between the governments, regulators, and the system operators. Now, I will focus on the regulatory challenges. I mean, the first and foremost, uh, uh, the first challenge in the regulatory frame is the lack of harmonized legislation. Without uh, a harmonization, I'm sorry to say, but we cannot ensure the interconnection and interoperability of the system, which is extremely important. So the lack of independent regulators today is another important issue. So uh, here I would just uh, want to uh, also um, give you another anecdote that I had. While working for the European Commission in Turkey, I was receiving several investors from the European Union countries. And basically, when I was meeting with them, they were asking two questions, only two questions. Well, in order to invest in Turkey, the first question was whether an independent regulator is in place or not. The second question is, how the tariff methodology and tariffs are identified or defined? These two questions. And based on these two questions, they decide whether to come to Turkey, to come to the country or not. That's why it is extremely important to have an independent so-called regulators in place in these countries. Of course, the competition and other issues are also very important in paving or opening the energy markets. Next slide, please. So now just give you a kind of brief uh, overview about the Mediterranean region. I mean, uh, according to the surveys, according to the recent, let's say, the data that we have, the population is expected, particularly in the southern Mediterranean, to grow at least more than uh, 85 million more by 2040. So which is almost 45% of the population in 2017. A stagnating energy demand 
in the European parts and uh, and also an energy intensified development in the South and Eastern Mediterranean. So the demand will remain stagnant in the European parts, but will significantly grow in the southern parts of which mainly the African countries. So the electricity demand will double by 2040. And in that respect, an extra capacity of 185 gigawatt is needed, most of which is expected to come from renewable energy sources. This is very crucial as well. And in order to have this investment in place, we need at least more than 400 billion dollars investment, which is also huge. Next slide, please. I mean, uh, if you also look at the specifications in the Mediterranean region, uh, major geography is often less favorable to cross-border integration than in the European Union, as population is located near sea and seashores, and, uh, and they have large territories. It is not easy to interconnect the countries. So the genera generation levels per capita, of course, comparing to the European Union is, 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 is low. And the investment is a key issue here in order to really uh, motivate and promote the investment. And the security of supply is another issue to be considered by the by the countries considering the geographical isolation next slide please i'm just quickly crossing these things as you all know this one this is the evaluation of the electricity demand uh, particularly in the mediterranean just a, a comparison to just pay your attention look at the left hand side uh, 1996 the countries uh, demand and now look at uh, the demand in uh, 2016 as i just want to pay your attention to the three countries turkey egypt and algeria and in uh, almost 20 years period the electricity uh, demand uh, increased uh, uh, three times in each of these countries more than even next slide please So the barriers, what are the challenges for the investors? I mean, we can also group them into different segments. Uh, the government influence on the electricity exchange, the absence of a secure and stable legal framework, as I already uh, uh, underlined. Significant subsidization is still an issue in majority of the countries. Uh, lack of information on market and data. This is also extremely <laughs> important because the, 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 the investor, first and foremost, look at the data of the countries before coming to that country to invest. I mean, the evaluation of this data is also extremely important to be transparent and uh, to be uh, online freely. Um, absent of a transparent and discriminatory access to the infrastructures is another barrier. Uh, stable, secure and long-term regulation is the main issue in uh, some of the members in the Mediterranean region. Next slide, please. I mean, in order to have a liberalized energy markets, uh, we need to talk on three main pillars, sustainability, competition, and security of supply. I'm not going into details of this one because of the time constraints. And next slide, please. The prerequisites for the liberalized energy market, adequacy of the commodity, whether it is in place, sufficient uh, sufficiency of the infrastructure, whether we have a kind of uh, functioning uh, infrastructure, and interconnected infrastructure, particularly with the cross border, and the system flexibility. These are the main issues to be considered for a liberalized energy market. Next slide, please. How we can enhance the uh, liberalized energy market? The regulatory framework, which is a key, and the transparency. The clear allocation of duties between these regulators and the main actors, particularly the coordination and cooperation with the government and the policymakers, and the investment signals and plans, whether they are also in place or not. I mean, we are not talking about the very short-term plans, the long-term plans that is being made by the system operators and with the policymakers uh, in coordination with the regulators. Next slide, please. <laughs> Regulatory reforms in the EU, this is a guide, just a table for the audience, I'm not going to into details, how the European Union started now where we are today. 
they have started uh, in the late 90s with the two directives then by time they developed we call it this uh, first package then the second package came in 2023 20, uh, uh, 2003 and the third one uh, came out in uh, 2009 now they are talking uh, on the fourth package so call even there has been uh, several amendments in the electricity renewable energy directives so basically uh, the regulation is a was a key in order to create a competitive and functioning european union energy markets so the role of regulators is extremely important in this respect next slide please These are the main internal functions and power of the regulators, uh, the independency, competency, accountability, transparency, enforcement, and internal organizations. I'm not going to into the details of this. The next slide, please. Um, the regulators' main task, as I said, that build a workable markets. I mean, basically, in many uh, cases, I have uh, witnessed and observed that somehow the the role of regulators are not really very well understood so basically we have to uh, regulators is not the the owner of the market so first and foremost regulators are the referee of the market markets because based on clear rules and regulations regulators are uh, orchestrating the markets and uh, creating a kind of level of play for the for the for the for the main players to play and to uh, to to exchange the energy in case of conflict of in case of uh, uh, dominant positions the regulator should involve and solve and resolve the situations so in many uh, in many cases i see that the regulators sometimes their duties and functions are misunderstood so it's not that way and the regulator is one of the main objectives of regulators to facilitate investment, which is the subject of today's webinar. I mean, how the regulators could pay open or could open the pay for the uh, for the investors to invest in the infrastructures, and we deal with uncertainties, as I said already. Next slide, please. Regulatory reforms. I will not go into this one. Unbundling tariff, retail market, access to the rules. You know all very well. Just for the audience. Next slide, please. Electricity cross-border interconnection and what are the benefit benefits? If a, a regulatory framework is in place in the Mediterranean region, if the cross-border uh, transactions are allowed, so there are ample benefit for each countries and uh, first and foremost they can foster the security of supply decrease the regional power shortage this is extremely important increase the integration of renewable energy sources in the system increase the energy efficiency reducing the electricity prices for final consumers and improve the allocation of investment and cost i will not go into details due to the time restrictions next slide please Regulator options to stimulate investments, as we said already, that regulators uh, have a kind of crucial role to play in promoting the investment. They can ensure a clear institutional architect at national level and also in the international level, uh, harmonizing the legislation and regulations as well. Transparency is another issue and improve the investment planning capacity. So the, with the involvement of the regulators in these respects can also play a vital role too. Next slide, please. I know that I am a bit uh, run of our time. The main funding and trends is the uh, Mediterranean uh, energy market. So majority of uh, our members have created their independent regulators, except two countries, Tunisia and uh, Lebanon. Lebanon is on the way to create the independent regulators, I hope in the very near future, along with the Tunisia. Once <clears throat> these two countries created their regulators, we will have all these all these independent regulators in place next slide please and the large majority of the independent regulators support full opening uh, of the electricity and where possible the gas markets according to our uh, let's say the uh, regulators in the mediterranean regions next slide please uh, majority of them have power 
and approve the tariffs. Uh, this is a very important and the key issues. Uh, majority of them are responsible for the dispute settlement. Uh, they also identify and define the tariffs. Uh, they, 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 most of them have the power to impose the sanctions, which is also another important element to create a functioning electricity market. Uh, next slide, please. So this is my last slide. Uh, I will uh, rather remain on the questions uh, from the audience to reply to them directly. So why should we regulate? As I said that, for two reasons. I mean, regulation or the regulators gives a kind of confidence to the, particularly the foreign investors. So the regulators independently from the, 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 the policy makers intervention can, uh, can run the, uh, uh, the, the, the energy markets. They can ensure open and dis non-discriminatory market access and can protect the consumers and facilitate the investment and encourage energy trading between the countries and regions. Our experience showed us that, I mean, if a country has an independent regulator, so we, I call it independent, but you can also uh, somehow uh, discuss on the independency level of the regulators. But even existing software regulators in one country gives a kind of very positive signal to the investors. So first, last, uh, last, first and last, uh, I would like to say that uh, the, the, the role of regulators in promoting investment in creating a functioning non-discriminatory and competitive energy market is key thank you very much for listening to me okay thank you hassan very much for very interesting presentations actually hassan told us about the main five pillars of the medreg strategy uh, and the challenges for uh, 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 in the shore, in the south shore of Mediterranean, uh, which is very much similar to the case in Africa, tremendous growth of uh, population, more demand for investments, which is looks, uh, I believe, uh, uh, opportunities more than challenges. If we find the proper formula, I believe, rests uh, for Africa uh, help in this. Uh, how market has been developed in Europe. Uh, main requirements for regulator and pass and kind need for reforms uh, for the market liberalization. Uh, he told us about the status of regulatory agency, just to mention that uh, uh, one of the pack package of IMF to Lebanon for uh, 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 economic reform is to establish an electricity regulator or energy regulator in general. This shows how much role of regulator is very much important even for economic relief. Uh, also, he showed us the importance of interconnections and then how MEDEC is monitoring progress uh, in regulation. Uh, I believe uh, there is a memo report which is Mediterranean Monitoring uh, Observatory for the status of regulator, which is monitor uh, progress and provide supports to regulator. Uh, uh, I believe you might have a lot of questions. Uh, I appreciate it. You remember you forward your question uh, uh Hassan, now we are around 113 uh, attendees uh, from different countries i see some questions from different uh, african countries which is very important now we will switch to our next speaker uh engineer uh, ehab uh, ismail uh, engineer ehab ismail is a vice executive chairman of new and renewable energy authority in egypt for technical affairs he has 20 years of experience in the field of renewable energy resources assessment and projects development he contributed in various work tasks in the renewable energy fields including setting up the egyptian renewable energy strategy up to 2022 which is targeting achieving 20 percent of the total generated electricity to come from renewable. He has involved in the planning and setting up policies for renewable energy in Egypt, as well as follow up the, and evaluating the implementation of these plans and policies. He participated in preparing technical and economical studies for different renewable energy technologies, uh, particularly electricity generation from wind and 
uh, CSP concentrated solar power. He participated in preparing project design bucket for the wind farms projects in Egypt to be implemented within the clean development mechanism uh, rules according to Kyoto Protocol. He is a focal point of Egypt with the regional center of renewable uh, energy and energy efficiency. Uh, Engineer Hab will talk to us in his first presentation on status of renewable energy in Egypt. Engineer Hab, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Hafiz, and thank you for inviting me to, you know, to participate in this important event to focus on the, what is the current of renewable energy in Egypt. I have two presentations today. The first one about you know, to clarify the current situation for electricity sector in general and the renewable energy in specific in Egypt. Uh, my uh, second piece. Uh, uh, maybe uh, most of you, you know that uh, the responsibility uh, of the electricity sector in Egypt uh, is affiliated to the Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy. It uh, consists of uh, Egyptian electricity holding the companies, uh, uh, company, which is responsible for all generation, uh, conventional generation companies. We talk about six, six generation companies and the nine distribution companies plus Egyptian electricity transmission company. You know, we talk about Egyptian electricity holding company consists of 16 companies. A hydropower project execution authority and the new and renewable energy authority. By the way, now yani, a, a law is already submitted for the parliament to integrate the hydropower project to be as a, yani, a part of a new and renewable energy authority. To, yani, to be as a one um, activities because the hydro now in Egypt uh, is uh, all the world consider it as one of the renewable energy source. So it is logic now to integrate it to the new and renewable energy authority. And we expect it to be in the, inshallah, in the early of next year to be yeah, in the one as a part of new and renewable energy authority. We have another three uh, authorities uh, responsible for the nuclear and the atomic authority in Egypt. Next, please. Uh, new and renewable energy authority. I am working now in new and renewable energy authority. Uh, was established in 1986 to be developed and introduce renewable energy technologies in uh, in a commercial scale together to implementation of related energy conservation program. Next, please. The current situation now in Egypt, we talk about and install the capacity around the 58 gigawatt. The big load already, uh, we talk about 31 uh, gigawatt. Uh, renewable energy and the capacities now in Egypt, we talk about nearly 6 gigawatt, yani 6 gigawatt. El, uh, electricity access rate about 99.7%. Here we took just it, uh, yani to focus about the installed capacity. 58 and the big load 31. So we have, yani, we talk about uh, reserve, we talk about uh, 27 gigawatt now in the grid. Uh, I am here to focus it because in the next slide, we will maybe to, uh, yani, talk, um, talk uh, in details about that, what about the current situation and what about the impact of the surplus or the reserve now in the grid about the current or the future project for renewable energy. Next, please. Here we took, yani in details, uh, the hydro, we took about uh, 2,800 uh, megawatt hydro and no potential for uh, next, uh, for any hydro now in Egypt for no potential in the, for the future now. Uh, also for the wind, we took about 1,375 megawatt, including 100, uh, one, uh, 1,125 megawatt say, public or governmental project affiliated to Narea, New and Renewable Energy Plus 20, uh, 250 megawatt private sector. This is the first time, see, first wind farms and already operated since two years ago. 
And now also we have a solar 20 megawatt CSCB, it's integrated with the combined cycle, plus bim bam, solar park as 1,465 megawatt, plus mid, uh, 100 megawatt BV for as a small and medium uh, BV. In the right of the screen, you can show the, um, the evolution of the renewable energy in Egypt. In, 2000, in 2015 and 16, we took about 3.7 gigawatt. Now we took about 6 gigawatt. Yani, the evolution only during five years, we, ca we uh, are able to add more than uh, 2 gigawatt only uh, yani, without hydro, without hydro. So it's uh, give a signal or strong signal that Egypt are capable or are able to attract the investors and to pave the way for renewable energy projects to generate electricity. Yes. Next, please. Our vision in Egypt is to increase the share for renewable energy in the energy mix. Our target is divided to short term strategy or plan to reach 20% from the installed capacity by 20, uh, 2022 and 42% from 2035 uh, respectively. To achieve our target or our yani, target, we may, yani, must have a policies. It's dependent on competitive bidding, ABC or BOO or merchant scheme, IPP, feed-in tariff, net metering. This is the policies already started to depend on since 2015 or 2014. This is uh, what already done. Next, please. Why, what had in the last uh, six years, uh, Egypt was uh, suffering from the electricity shortage. It was a crisis for the, it called at that time, it's electricity crisis at that time, because the energy mix depend on that time, mainly for the conventional power plant. It's a, it was represented at that time, 90, 91% from the total installed capacity. And also the big and the increase for the growth rate for the demand for the electricity increased by about 10% yearly and the no spare bars and also one of the main challenges at the time for is the electricity tariff subsidy so in 2014 yani here we can consider it it's a evolution maybe somebody took a bit about revolution for legislation in the electricity sector uh, itself it started with amendment of the name of the Ministry of Electricity and Energy to be Ministry of Electricity and Renewable Energy. The tariff reform uh, program was adopted and announced for five years and uh, extended to 2022 also lately uh, and recently also extended up to 20, uh, 2025. This is for that uh, electricity to remove the electricity subsidy totally. In two, in, in also in 2014, the cabinet approved for the feed-in tariff system for electricity produced from renewable energy sources, BV and wind. And by the way, Dr. Half is here as the main core to prepare this feed-in tariff. And I would like to thank him to, yani, regarding, uh, because this is, was an initiative at that time to depend on the uh, feed-in tariff at that time. Uh, also, uh, mainly the uh, renewable energy law was uh, issued in 2014 uh, for, uh, to attract the private sector to come to Egypt and uh, invest in renewable energy project. In 2015, electricity law has been issued also in 2015. Uh, next, please. Uh, also, next, please. So, next, please. This is the, the chart for the, yani for our target is in, uh, for the short term, uh, it's our uh, target to, to reach 22 by, 22% uh, uh, by 2022. It's, uh, it consists of 12, about 12% from wind, 2% from, uh, from BV, 
and the hydro 60%. Next, please. Here, uh, also, yani, regarding the integrated uh, sustainable energy strategy, in 2016, the Supreme Council of Energy has adopted a long-term strategy up to uh, 2035. This is, is including it to, at that time, it's the share for renewable energy is uh, yani, to, uh, yani, for 42%. Cool represent about 16%. By the way, uh, lastly or recently, the government decided to replace the coal by renewable energy. So we uh, uh, nearly and in the near future, the 42% from renewable energy will be shared and they may be reached to more than 50% or 60% from the total. It's, in, yeah, it's a give a signal, a strong signal or positive signal that the renewable energy will be the main driver for the electricity market in Egypt, because it will depend on the private sector mainly to invest and to implement the pro project to achieve our target by 2035. Uh, by the way, as Dr. Hafiz uh, mentioned uh, that in his introduction, that to achieve this target, we need to add about 31 gigawatt from BV, 8 gigawatt from CCB, and 20 gigawatt from wind. So it's a huge and a big challenge is how to attract the private sector to add nearly 60 gigawatt during 15 years, inshallah, in the future. So this is, will be a big challenge for that. Next, please. Uh, this is Fats, I think we lost him. Uh, I think we have maybe an uh, interconnection uh, problem, uh, but uh, till uh, Engineer Hab uh, will be back with us, he talked to us about the institutional framework for the power sector in Egypt. Uh, he talked, uh, provided us with background about area, status of the power generation and consumption in Egypt, evolution of renewable energy in Egypt and objectives, schemes for renewable energy project development in Egypt according to the law, where we identify four schemes, and changes in the legal framework and strategy development of a strategy and objectives. Uh, actually, as he shows that in the strategy 2035, uh, it was presumed that coal may play 12% as a share in the electricity mix. Yet, in the ongoing development for the energy strategy 2040, and thanks to the reduction in the cost of renewable energy, now renewable energy will totally replace that, and there will be no coal in the future of the power sector uh, uh, of Asia. Uh, so, uh, this is a help in. Uh, 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 I, is engineer here, I have returned back or not yet? Not it yet. seems not yet. Not, not yet. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so I mean, uh, uh, he shows uh, that this share, this shows uh, the share of renewable energy in the updated, which is take, take place in 2017, that we expect that 42% of renewable energy will come uh, 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 of electrical energy will come from uh, renewable energy. Yet, the new development in the strategy, as I mentioned, uh, expecting much further. We talk about close to 60%. This is just the preliminary results. We talk about increase in the electricity share, which by default uh, will be an increase in renewable energy share in the total supply mix of Egypt. We expect that as uh, electric mobility took place, uh, uh, hydrogen scenarios is being considered combining renewable energy and hydrogen scenario. This is well add too much to renewable energy. If engineer Ahab 
uh, has still okay. have a problem. He already returned okay. back. Very good. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry, doctor. This is a okay. Next, please. Uh, maybe share with you about the growth rate for the demand or the big load in Egypt. Uh, yani here we took just maybe constant or uh, increase uh, a little bit. So our uh, previous um, the plan for development, it was depend on the growth rate about uh, from 6 to 7% annually and sometimes reach it to 10%. So now in Egypt, we talk about maybe one percent. It's the growth rate. It's mean mean be now. It's a challenges for renewable energy. Somebody talks about the reform of the electricity tariff. It encourages the people to go to to uh, to go to to uh, uh, make energy conservation. make energy conservation regarding to the energy subsidy. Sometimes also the effective, uh, uh, maybe uh, negatively regarding to the uh, industrial sector about that. So now in Egypt, the growth rate, maybe we need to develop it to increase the, the growth rate for the demand for uh, electricity uh, in total. It's in, based on it, we, have to add some capacities yearly and to achieve our strategy by 2035. Next, please. What about the current scheme? Based on the uh, renewable energy law, which was issued in 2014, we have five or six now, six policies, uh, what we call the governmental project by new and renewable energy authority. And this is the capacity already added, already installed and operated by uh, Nareya. Uh, and also we have about now under preparation uh, 450 megawatt, 250 megawatt wind and to about 200 megawatt BV solar power. Uh, uh, for feeding tariff, uh, 1,465 megawatt operation phase also uh, we have also for the BOO, build on operate system, we have uh, 250 megawatt in, on, in operation now, and we have four, 450 megawatt in the under implementation now. Also, we have, as Dr. Hafiz mentioned, that we have about, took about <coughs> 2,000 megawatt in under development or under preparation, maybe, yani, it represents about 1,500 megawatt wind and 200 megawatt BV. It's under uh, now is under preparation or in the, uh, in the different phases now. And for the first option is the EETC. And I think my colleague engineer Iman will explain about the first option in Egypt and what is the current status for the, for it. For Last one, or no, not last one, for neat metering. Neat metering gets allowed by the uh, regulation and the approval of the Egypt era. It's uh, now it's allowed up to 2000, uh, uh, up to uh, 20 megawatt now for BV rooftop system or for the some uh, industrial sector to implement it to uh, self consumption. And now we reach about 120 megawatt now for ipp project or it's the by law it's allowed for any developer to come and to implement his, his project and to sell the electricity direct to his consumer using the grid and the willing to charge but and and now is the regulation already prepared by international consultant uh, under supervision of the egypt era or the egyptian electricity regulatory uh, now, and we will expect it to be issued in the first half of next year for this is regulation for IPP project. Next, please. This is just a map for distributed for power plant in, in Egypt in generally, and that we talk about red sea cost and uh, another 
remoted area in the desert. This is uh, this is what uh, already for big project and wind project. Next, please. Uh, here we talk about if we back again uh, back again for 2014 we start to buy 14.3 cent a dollar kilowatt hour for the first round at the time uh, some people say that are you crazy to start with this is high high um, tariff but for us as a country just at the time was after two revolution of the unstable policies to attract the investors to come, you must put attract uh, tariff. And based on it, after just only two years, we reach to 8.4 cent dollar for the second round. And now, now in Egypt, we reach it in the last tender for the BV, we talk about 2.48 cent dollar for, for BV project. Also, we took about 3.1 cent dollar per kilowatt hour now. In Egypt, now we took about, all of us took about to reach for the tariff for the BV projects, 2 cent dollar. Maybe Saudi Arabia and the United Arab of Emirates reach it to that, but it's different from Egypt to, to these countries. But our target now to reach to in, decrease the tariff to be 2 cent dollar per kilowatt hour for the for the way uh, for the bv and we talk about three cent dollar per kilowatt hour per wind so maybe without feeding tariff projects sorry we cannot reach to this this tariff because based on the convinced for the and the trust of the lenders for the developers for the private about the current investment uh, in Egypt and the security, stability, and 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 all of that. Without that, we cannot reach to two cent or two point four uh, four eight cent now. This is so. Maybe I I said that. Thank you for feeding tariff program to be able or to encourage Egypt to reach this is prices or this is tariff. Uh, next, please. I cannot stop here, and in my next presentation, I will yani, represent in details about the opportunities for renewable energy, and thank you, Dr. Havels, for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Engineer Ab. Actually, the last two present, uh, slides, you showed that uh, how prices has been dropped uh, tremendously as objective for reaching much more price uh, reduction in future i think we need to switch directly to the second presentation uh to save time so uh please uh, engineer Ab will talk to us about investment opportunities in renewable energy in egypt I uh, okay uh, again i started with some uh, slides already uh, represented in the first uh, presentation because as i said before the 16 percent of coal uh, for coal from our target to replace it or to add it for the renewable to replace it by renewable energy project. So we took about 58, 68% from renewable energy. So our target to about 62 must be a gigawatt in 2035 must be increased to reach about this is um, about this is target to reach 60% or 58%. This is our target. So again we have a big challenges not big huge challenges how to attract because it will be depend on the private sector mainly for the large scale and small uh, and the medium scale how to attract the private sector to come to egypt how to pave the way for him yes we have now and uh, we are able and uh, enough experience to work with the private sector now but again, what about the big challenges for the market now? What about the big challenge for the growth rate and about the demand side? The mainly demand side in Egypt, now it's represented uh, yani, uh, by the residential sector and vice versa uh, uh, other uh, world countries because it's depend on the, the main sector or the higher sector consumption, it's, it, it is the industrial sector. In Egypt, no, 
in Egypt, uh, it represents only 27% from the total consumption in Egypt. Reg comparing with the 42, 43 for the residential sector. So we need to encourage the industrial sector to develop, to increase, because if the uh, industrial sector, the demand for the electricity, uh, for the electricity in the electricity sector increased, so we need to add to to reduce the surplus already existing now and to need uh, consequently to add it the new capacity and to res to resume our to resume our plan for the renewable energy sector next please First, if we know to talk about renewable energy and to need to add about more than 60 uh, gigawatt, yani there is a, or there are a huge also the potential or uh, challenges, maybe technical challenges, technical capability for the grid, it's uh, able or not to absorb all the electricity uh, generation from this. The investment competitiveness and the supply side for how to increase the share for renewable for private sector to come to invest for that. Also for the regulation and for the policies and addressing the network as well as the market role in this issue. This is our uh, our challenges in the future for this. Next, please. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's uh, yeah, our e schemes. It's a depend on governmental project and feeding tariff. For the governmental project by a new and renewable energy authority, uh, and the, yani, I think uh, no more uh, project will be implemented by Naraya in the future, and the way is will be paving for the private sector. For the feeding tariff, yani, thank you for the feeding tariff, and the government decided in the future depend on BOO scheme, on auction scheme also for net metering. So we talk about a first governmental project and the feeding tariff, no. And the other four schemes in the blue of the screen, BOO, auction net metering, IPP, this is, will be our future, our, our, our policies in the future. Next, please. Okay, to reach our... Uh, our target, we have a policies, we have a regulation, we have a, a law, a renewable energy law and the electricity law. Also, the government, another incentive must be submitted for the private sector. <laughs> but what about that? It's first land availability, more than 7,600 square kilometers of desert land have been allocated for new and renewable energy authority. Huh? to avail it for the private sector to come and to implement it, uh, their project on, on, on it. Also, environmental impact st studies already done by Nareya and the bird migration, already all of these studies already done uh, or already conducted by Nareya and they're ready to submit it for any investors for, for, for that. Uh, signing the land use agreement with the investor against the payment equivalent to 2% 2 for the annual generation from the project itself. Yani, uh, here Narea avails the land for the private sector against two percent from the annual energy generated from the project. The customer duties and the VAT, the customer duties, the government decided to reduce the customer duty, uh, duties to be two percent for the renewable energy equipment and spare parts instead of five percent. Also, VAT has been reduced to be five percent instead of fourteen percent. Signing a long term power purchase agreement also from ranging between 20, 20 years for wind energy and 25 years for BV or photovoltaic uh, projects. Next, please. This is just only when the map or when the resources map started in, two, in, one, uh, in 1987 by Egypt, just only a windy map after that for Egypt. After that, a specific wind atlas for Suez Gulf area after extended to be covered by all of land of in Egypt and with the Rizu uh, laboratories, it's represented that the Red Sea coast 
yes, it's uh, يعني increase with high wind speed to reach it to 10.5 meter per second. And another two areas in the yellow areas uh, here represent in west and east Nile. Uh, the wind speed reached to eight per uh, eight meter per second also here. And we already started and focused on Suez Gulf area. And in the future, we will transfer to west and uh, this is area and uh, this is area in the future for that. Next, please. In Egypt, we maybe somebody say we are lucky because yes, we have uh, uh, 100 million population in Egypt and they lived only in 5% from the total land of, of Egypt. But now, yani yes, we have 95% uh, from the desert is empty. So all of them is available or is can uh, can yani implement project BV project or solar project for this area. Just only we need the infrastructure to extend the the grid sometime uh, like for that. So we can yes we are lucky because we have a sun and we have a desert uh, or desert empty land and yeah for, for that. Next. Uh, this is ju just uh, it, uh, this is map shows the total how to yani uh, break down for the total area allocated for in uh, for Naraya in West Nile, Suez Gulf, in Bimban and the Common also for that next piece. Uh, just here, yani you need to give you an yani to allocate land. We need to obtain. 11 permissions, 11 uh, approval from 11 authorities, different authorities. By minimum, it will, uh, yeah, it takes two years minimum to, to obtain all this information uh, or this approval. So Narea conducted this and obtained all of these permits and to be the land to be ready for the uh, investors at any time he will to need to and to need to start his project. Next, please. After obtaining this is uh, presidential or uh, permission from eleven uh, authorities, the presidential decrees already uh, issued to uh, allocate this is land for Narea to install the project or implement the project by itself or avail it for the private sector. Uh, again, I back here again for the my uh, which we already ended in the, my first presentation. Regarding to the prices and the tariff, what about the future now in Egypt for the auction? And I think the engineer Iman will, inshallah, we will yeah, explain what is the current situation for the auction and what is the, the plan for the electricity transmission company, the Egyptian electricity transmission company regarding to the auction and what about that. But here we can talk again for IPP project. For, for yes. For IPP project, yes, it's by the law, it's allowed for any developer to come to invest and to implement and to sell his electricity tariff. But what about the market? What about the grid? Yani, not logic to open the market for the IPP project with about uh, yani cap, with about uh, limited for the capacity each year, because we need to yani, match with the grid itself, what's the absorb, what is about the grid and what about the cap for for each. What about the price? As again, we back again, the electricity tariff is still subsidy in each. Yes. After uh, yani maybe extended the the reform for the electricity extended up to can before 2022. Now 2025. So the Ministry of Electricity and the Ministry of Finance still pay some money for subsidy. For support people in Egypt. Now, if we can allow for the IPP project now without free market, so not logic now, it's under study now by the, as I mentioned before in my first uh, presentation, a consultant, international consultant, already assigned and now working with the Egypt era to prepare the regulations for that, to start the IPP. But from my point of view, 
the future will be يعني for the IPV project in Egypt to be able to reach to be reach for this our target in 2035. Next slide. Also, here we talk, if we talk about, I am here talking about the investment opportunity for uh, private sector, not maybe some of, of um, the uh, large of it will be for the grid connected, but what about the off grid connected? for the in uh, recre um, regional center for renewable energy and energy efficiency in egypt they just prepared a study that it mentioned that there is an a potential for two gigawatt for solar pumping in, in egypt in remote area to replace the diesel uh, pumping potential in egypt to with the solar pv in egypt so this is also a big opportunity to work in solar water pumping in Egypt. Next, please. Uh, for net metering, as I mentioned, it's uh, av av available or extended up to, to, to uh, 20 megawatt for if, uh, every single project. By the way, in, uh, in Naria New and Renewable Energy Authority, uh, we are the authority to certify as uh, companies already working for the it's divided uh two two categories the first one less than 500 kilowatt and the second category is starting up to from 500 kilowatt up to 20 megawatt for the large scale or the smallest uh, medium scale uh, from 500 kilowatt up to 20 megawatt now we talk about uh, we have now 23 projects with total capacities about 85 megawatt is under implementation and under preparation now. This is most of them, it consists of about uh, 50 megawatt from it for industrial sector. We talk about 22 megawatt for agricultural sector and just only we talk about 3 megawatt for commercial sector. So, yani, the future also for the net metering also to reduce the cost for the uh, reduce cost for the BV or the uh, reduce the cost for electricity tariff in industrial sector. Next step, please. Also, we have an issue. We have another new technologies. Or, yani, we can start with the electrical vehicle. In Egypt, yes, some studies already conducted by New and Renewable Energy and another minister, Minister of uh, Military uh, Production, Minister of Environment, is that Egypt, and we have many scenarios regarding the potential for electrical vehicle and how to encourage the use electrical vehicle. But, but the big challenge is now how to utilize the electricity generation, not from conventional power plant, but we need to encourage to use the electricity from renewable energy sources to be to to be as a, a main source for electrical vehicle in Egypt. So this is also this is a potential, and I think two countries, uh, two companies now working in this in Egypt. But we have a big potential for the electrical vehicle in Egypt. Another thing, electricity, a feed-in tariff for electricity generated from waste energy has been approved uh, and issued by the cabinet in, two, in November 2015. And uh, yani, there is maybe, uh, yani, as the Ministry of Environment uh, um, announced that about, we took about five, uh, 50, 50 companies already uh, certified or um, uh, uh, yani, uh, now able to now to start to working for the in, uh, waste to energy to electricity uh, to generate electricity from the waste to energy to for that also another something uh, important for the geothermal in egypt we talk about the study already conducted uh, by narea and the uh, ganubil wadi uh, petroleum companies in uh, also and funded by the kfw and uh, allocated some uh, yani or allocated some uh, promising sites in rich sea coast also and Suez Gulf for 
geothermal energy. But because we are uh, developing a country, we cannot start with geothermal now, and because it's still with the high cost now, uh, for the high cost. But now another study, details study, we will need to identify some location, exact location to start with it too, because as a Minister of Electricity, we talk about how the, what about the cost, what about the cost for the kilowatt hour generated from ge geothermal. Next, please. <coughs> Next, please. Uh, this is an uh, electrical vehicle. This is some, yani, so, uh, sorry, uh, please back again. Uh, this is, uh, what about the, the conclusion of the studies conducted for the electrical vehicle in Egypt that yeah, you can, we need about Many studies have been prepared showing that under the high scenario, we can add 3.5 million electrical vehicles would play to the street of Egypt. Uh, also, by 2025, also we have another, yani we need to consume or to uh, yani, uh, cabasses from electricity or generation electricity of, uh, range between 6.62 uh, and 2.4 terawatt hour for electricity, depending on the scenario, which would in interest it to three uh, range to three to 13 terawatt hour in 2030. This represents between 0.2 percent and 1 percent of the projected electricity production by 2025, and one and two four for the projected electricity production by 2030. Why we took again? Uh, again because there is a possibility for increase to use the electricity generation from renewable energy to be as a source for the electric electrical vehicle in Egypt. Next, please. Is this is the last slide for me. Yani, I need just to make a conclusion for our project and yeah, for our, my presentation. What is Egypt? Alhamdulillah, is transferring from renewable energy plants to gigawatt uh, renewable energy capacities. Yani before 2014, we talk about in about limited project, limited capacity from renewable energy. But through only six years ago, now we cross the gigawatts for, for renewable energy. Mainly, most of them depend on the private sector. So it, it gives a signal or a strong signal that Egypt is uh, able to attract the investment, the investors to come to Egypt to invest and to implement their project. And also, we talk about the lenders. Now we talk about the power purchase agreement and the frac agreement is bankable now. Just now in Egypt, it changes the name of the company and the capacity of the project no more because all of the lenders already refused and with us in, uh, in preparing this uh, all of this is agreement. So now we talk about, yes, Egypt is attract for renewable energy project. Large scale project energy are one of the main elements to attract foreign direct investment. Uh, Again, I thank you for the feeding tariff scheme which carries the renewable energy market in Egypt. Both in, a, in above the current degradation of renewable energy prices, feeding tariff has been replaced by the competitive bidding and the auction in the coming phase. There is a huge potential and also an energy efficiency in Egypt after reforming the electricity tariff. I think this is the last one. And please, next. <laughs> Okay. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Engineer Yav, uh, very much for your enlightening presentation. Uh, I think we need to switch directly to Engineer Salma because we are running of time and I appreciate very much for our next presenter. Uh, try to stick with the time. Uh, Salma uh, is an energy expert she has over 18 years of experience in energy regulations. 
she was a general yeah, manager. Maybe we have Ricardo before. Excuse me? Maybe we have Ricardo before. Ricardo yes. before? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If uh, we go first for Ricardo, yes, uh, I, uh, uh, Ricardo, uh, yes, uh, Ricardo Bicciato uh, is uh, Bonelli Erard, uh, work for Bonelli Erard. He uh, has been based in Cairo since 2016. He takes uh, the lead in uh, coordinating all matters and involving other uh, Bonelli era uh, office uh, and other law firms in African countries for cross uh, border matters as required. Ricardo is an expert in project and uh, export finance, uh, acquisition and corporate finance and project contracts. He is a member of the Africa team construction and engineering focus team, uh, energy and infrastructure focus team, and bank focus team. Uh, Ricardo will talk to us uh, about uh, the regulatory framework and renewable uh, environment from investor perspective and ideas for future improvements. Please, Ricardo, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Res for Africa for having me back again on uh, an Egyptian event. Um, today, the purpose of the presentation is to share with you and the audience what are the foreign investors' um, expectations uh, about the regulatory framework for renewable energies and uh, uh, what are likely the future expectations for foreign investors on the renewable energy legal frameworks for Egypt. Um, change the slides, please. Um, in general, the expectation from uh, uh, foreign investors is uh, uh, to deal uh, with uh, a legal framework which is uh, clear and certain. Um, as a project finance lawyer, uh, the, um, you know, we are asked uh, to, be, to do some risk assessment. And the first one, uh, any investor come across, even before uh, meeting with his lawyer, is uh, trying to understand whether the legal framework uh, is uh, um, enough sounded to, uh, uh, to proceed with investment. Uh, as you know, any renewable project is quite uh, capital intensive, especially in the first, uh, at the beginning of the, of the project. And these uh, uh, bring a lot of attention from uh, any investors on the legal framework. Um, I want to stress that the legal framework, the regulatory uh, risk, uh, is a risk that, uh, differently from other risk in, uh, in any project, uh, goes uh, from through the whole life of the project. So start from the bidding process, go to the uh, construction and go to the operation cost. Um, and uh, the other uh, point which is interest to understand why it's so important to have a clear legal framework is uh, uh, regulatory risk is not a risk that lenders won't ever go on to, to take on their shoulders. So uh, it is very important because at the end uh, this is a risk which stay with uh, the sponsor stay with the developer is not something that can really be mitigated uh, apart from a recourse uh, on on the sponsor. Um, second second expectation from the investors is to have a variety of procurement and supporting scheme uh, to have some flexibility on the choose of what kind of scheme I am going to use to invest in that country. And uh, I, I want just to point out that these, uh, uh, the analysis uh, of the flexibilities on the tools have to be a good reflection of the maturity of the market. So, for instance, if you look uh, uh, in, in a completely newly market, uh, feeding tariffs is what uh, probably most of the foreign investors will look for. But in a more developed uh, market, uh, 
then uh, you're not looking for the field tariffs, you're going to go to for the auction. Or, as we're going to see, and this is part of uh, the next slides, are uh, the expectation of uh, a PPA, uh, corporate uh, um, you know, market there. Uh, where is uh, Egypt in terms of uh, this expectation? Uh, surely, uh, um, Egypt, the commitment of uh, Egypt uh, uh, goes back to the 80s. So it's a commitment uh, which has been always there. Uh, we have seen an uh, uh, incredible improvement uh, hold to the old years. Um, we have uh, the flexibility because uh, today we have uh, the uh, net metering system, we have the oceans, we have the feeding tariffs. Um, so what is next? Uh, probably uh, is uh, to have a new IPP regulations. We know the, the IPP is there, as mentioned by the previous speakers, it's something that is already in the legal framework, but it has not been fully developed. Um, so it, uh, uh, again, where now, considering the following, where is, uh, what is the expectation that we, we, we can likely have as a foreign investor here? And uh, I ask to move to the, to the, to the next uh, slide. Okay, uh, is for sure to uh, try to unlock as much as possible the corporate PPA market. That is what uh, um, is our expectation as a, as a, as a lawyers uh, um, assisting investors looking to this market. More and more, uh, we have been in contact with investors asking where is the, uh, the what, what is the status of uh, a corporate PPA market? Um, the same question has not only asked to us as a legal advisor, but also to other uh, advisor, especially the regulatory framework. And uh, the reason for this and why we hope uh, and we, we think that this is going to be the next uh, step uh, for Egypt to improve uh, their, uh, their legal framework is, what that, uh, is something that uh, is unavoidable. Um, most of the large corporates today uh, has a need to uh, become more and more environmental friendly and to reduce what is their own carbon footprint. So it's not becoming just, uh, it's coming become a, a, a strategic and a commercial priority. Uh, being uh, going green, trying to uh, reduce their own uh, carbon footprint is uh, required not only on the economic point of view, but on the, also on the sustainability point of view. Um, and uh, you have to think also that large corporates look also to improve their brand. Being able to say that they are going green, really green, is something that uh, uh, has, a, has a, let's say, a great and positive uh, uh, feedback from, from, the, from the market and also from the clients. So this is something that is a trend, is something that uh, they will, uh, because they are looking to other markets, they will expect that to be also in Egypt. Uh, second things, um, which is more uh, an economic um, set perspective and is very important, is uh, in a market where countries more and more are less willing to provide for uh, uh, economic support uh, or uh, from sovereign guarantee, which is always a huge issue in any African countries, the need or not to have a sovereign guarantee there. In a country where uh, probably you know, less and less you want to provide sovereign guarantees, uh, having a corporate PPA and having a market there uh, more clear that allows uh, the investors to um, develop projects with uh, uh, large corporates uh, with good credit, credit, uh, credit worthiness is a way to bypass a number of bankability issues. So, uh, you know, while uh, you, you don't actually need really a sovereign guarantee there, and you achieve, uh, you can really develop uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, renewables if you have, uh, uh, again, uh, this, this flexibility um, supported by a clear uh, uh, legal framework. The third thing probably is uh, uh, by having a market uh, with corporate PPA market, you are uh, a bit more independent from the national energy policies. Um, 
you know, is not something, um, you know, looking, you know, the, to the future, uh, many things change. Uh, this happened also uh, in a jurisdiction like Italy, where at a certain point uh, they have to review the, 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 the tariffs, which was a disaster for the market, uh, was really bad for the reputation of, of, of the Italian government. So, um, in, a con in countries where, uh, you know, this risk is there, because you maybe want to, to develop now renewables, but maybe then you have other priorities in your national energy policy, it may happen that you can suffer a change in the view uh, by having a strong market, by having the possibility to unlock really a corporate PPA market means give the opportunity to the investor to be a bit more independent uh, from the national energy policy. Uh, last uh, uh, point, but this is not, of course, there are many others, but let's say important is, is an instrument which gives a lot of flexibility to the client's needs. Um, allowed for sure to improve what is a uh, cost predictability by fixing um, prices for a certain period of time and therefore is a great tool to secure the supply of energy. These are, uh, let's say, the, 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 the reason why we are expecting more and more um, an interest uh, and, a, and a strong expectation from the foreign direct investors on uh, uh, developing these, uh, these uh, PPA market. Um, if we look then uh, to, to Egypt, I uh, will say, uh, really, there are all the, all the, the conditions for this. Uh, if, uh, if you think it's a large market size, uh, apart from, of course, uh, which is, uh, you know, we have a huge availability of renewables, but we have a large market size, we have large corporates, uh, we have an increasing demand of, of energy. Um, there is a political and currency stability, which is very important. Uh, but probably uh, what what still have to be to be done is, of course, as we said, the, the, the improving the legal framework. And this is something that I know uh, Salma will, will, will speak about uh, and has been touched also by my previous speakers. Um, and uh, the other things, which is not really legal, but is more uh, of an infrastructure, we need probably to improve uh, the, the grid infrastructures to uh, permit, uh, you know, a better incorporation of these kind of tools in the Egyptian market. Um, I, that's my, I'm, I was, I think, uh, maybe less than my 15 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. I prefer if, uh, to leave the floor maybe to Salma and then to uh, receive uh, uh, any question the audience may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo, for sticking with the time uh, or even saving for some time. Uh, you are quite generous to offer this. Uh, actually, Ricardo talked about evolution of the policies uh, in Egypt, renewable energy in Egypt, and he talked specifically the needs to develop the corporate PPA market and needs to improve the legal framework to include this. Actually, this open more questions, uh, and we are receiving many questions regarding this. I will shift it to the end of the session for uh, Ricardo to respond to. Uh, uh, Salma, now we switch to Salma. Uh, Salma, as I mentioned, she is uh, uh, an energy expert. She has over 10 years of experience in energy regulations. She was the general manager for licensing and performance evaluation at the Egyptian Electric Utility and Consumer Protection Agency, regulatory agency. She played a vital role in developing necessary regulations for attracting investment in the power sector in Egypt, including private investments in renewable and distributed uh, distribution networks. She worked in more with more than 100 licensees covering all business chain of the power industry. Also, she worked with many stakeholders, including both national and international entities and organization in Africa and Mediterranean. In addition to her BSc in engineering, uh, she has a diploma from Florence School for Reg of Regulations in Energy Regulations. Salma, the floor, the floor is yours. I appreciate also if you could uh, limit yourself within the available time because we are running of time. 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Hafiz. Uh, thanks, Ilaria and Roberto. And thanks to all my uh, to, to all those who presented the previous presentation for making my job easier and easier. I will go directly to the next slide, please, because here we have a story. You told all the things of the story. I will not go deeper into the laws, but my presentation is focusing on a brainstorming in uh, giving a look at the bigger bigger picture here from a different perspective. Uh, yes, we are relying currently on the two laws, the renewable energy law and the electricity law, but we started far uh, away from this uh, by the presidential decree 339 as a regulator. Uh, that was like 13 years of accomplishments which led to such laws and to the current situation we were all talking about private investments, private investors' needs, uh, financiers. That was a dream. and. Even with the current challenges, this dream is coming true. Next, please. Okay, I made some kind of checklists and going through the uh, laws itself to see where we are, what is there, what is not there, and if there are more chances with each of the uh, illustrated schemes on the laws. And I will start, of course, with the renewable energy law, with the four schemes and two tools which were illustrated there. Uh, first, if I'm talking about ENRIA, the new and renewable energy authority, uh, thanks you have for illustrating so many things about the renewable energy and the ENRIA. Well, this scheme worked even before the renewable energy law, but the law organized it in a, uh, uh, in a way that uh, leaves a place for the private investment investments, but still there are other bylaws for INREA which allows it to uh, work as a company or a shareholder. So the question here to, uh, to, to think about it, could there be any uh, potential for INREA and investors to form joint ventures and if that is there, would it, would it be a conflict uh, with current in real uh, role of certifying and uh, being part of the policy uh, makers. Then if we go to the fit-in tariff, uh, well, yes, it, 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 it's, it's a great success story and it, it's the one which make every, uh, every uh, dialogue currently about renewable energy working but I still see that there were a room for 300 megawatt of small and medium uh, BV project that was not obtained. Maybe it was not addressed as well as the large ones at this time. So the question here, uh, is, it a, is it applicable to have those 300 megawatt for small, uh, for small projects, uh, for households, commercials, uh, again, uh, with the fit and tariff schemes or not? Then if we move to the competitive bidding, well, yes, it worked. Uh, and you will see a, a table after uh, some slides uh, that shows how many are licensed for uh, competitive bidding. Uh, I think there are more chances, of course, for competitive bidding since uh, uh, the wind potential is still great and it did not work with the fitting tariffs. So the room here is for competitive bidding. but. The issue here that, uh, that needs a brainstorming, is it better to have large competitive buildings with burdens of the government or to leave a room to the IBB instead? Uh, and, and then everyone could work and everyone could benefit all over Egypt, especially with the, with the, with the current potential that I believe Iman will illustrate that there will be uh, interconnection and with interconnection comes the regional markets and regional markets need all the investors everywhere to have a room to work uh, through it. Then the IBB scheme and, uh, and let me know when we started the renewable energy law we were targeting the IBB but then no one was there and when the fit and tariff came everyone was matured and worked faster as business works faster than the government and that's that's really known the business absorbed all the policies and regulations they came up with financing solutions technological solutions but yet there are no regulations for rbp currently the regulator is working for that 
and there is a, a, a great fostering to start this as soon as possible, but this needs a lot of work, and I will come to that later. Uh, there is a kind of, let's say, a way of IVP place, uh, like mentioned uh, with, with, with Fabio when he mentioned the next meeting, because we have uh, the, this circular that illustrates that there could be a, three, a third party private investor who sells to the consumer itself, but currently it's very limited and it's only up to 300 megawatts. Then the other tools that would create a great potential for the future uh, renewable energy investment is the guarantee of origin certificates. Uh, the regulations were set uh, several years ago and discussed, uh, but according to the tariff reform, uh, the current market status, it's not yet uh, approved and declared, but with the current initiatives for green uh, Egypt, I think it's the right time to start looking at such tool and, uh, and enabling it, uh, start uh, making public hearings and public consultations to, to reach uh, the right regulations on the real life. Uh, and the market is ready for that. And it would start, it could start as a voluntarily uh, guarantee of origin, which leads to the non-voluntary one, which is the CUTA. And the CUTA here illustrated in the law was meant to be on the uh, demand side, not on the supply side, as we are going for the guarantee of origin. The question here, would it be uh, publicly accepted to have CUTA on the demand side uh, in light of the current tariff reform? Next, please. Uh, here, after illustrating the different mechanisms, we have to see what happened according to what's achieved by those mechanisms. And the main outcomes here on the real business, on the business chain, that we already have large investors, small and, and medium investors on the ground. So the appetite to invest is more and more. They are there, so they are waiting for all the opportunities to catch. Uh, the know-how is there for the technology itself, and there is even a room for local manufacturers, which is currently under uh, discussion and processing with, uh, with different uh, governmental entities to have such manufacturers and to even in in incentivize local manufacturing. So that will lead to better uh, prices in a competition. Of course, we have currently efficient laboring in different, with different experiences. Uh, small and medium scale companies for EBC, uh, a whole market is there uh, because of what uh, are, are accomplished. And then national banks started financing renewable energy projects. And this is itself is a great achievement because when we first started, no national bank could took such risk in that time. So if we're looking at the chain itself, it is there, it is working, it is waiting for more and more opportunities. Next, please. Next, please. Okay. That's from the business side. And if we are looking at the legal side, we will find that the policies are there, the contracts because of the fit and tariff and neat metering are there, the BBA, the network access contract, the connection agreement, the direct agreement, net metering contracts, and if the contracts are there, any other contracts could be developed out of them because they were meant for large projects. So it's easier because we know currently the terms, the risks, uh, the legal uh, binding articles that we need to work with, as well as the codes, the grid codes, distribution codes, PV codes are there, more reflective tariff, and it's going to change uh, with the tariff reform and grid charges, network charges are there. I believe currently they are working on indexing the network charges. So here we can see that the regulatory framework is almost there. It needs only to, to be enhanced for different schemes uh, with uh, more different tools. Next, please. Here, as you can see, I've just uh, put a simple table. It goes for a few months ago, but it's not a little, it's not, there is no major changes on it. You can see here the number of companies that obtained licenses and permits for fitting projects less than 20, more than 50, 
projects were under the BO scheme, which is the competitive meeting, bidding, the need metering licensed projects, the companies uh, who got permits under net metering and the total number as well as the total capacity. Next, please. Now we are going to the electricity law. It's the biggest part here. It's the one which will allow for the uh, future of the electricity market. Everything for the market is illustrated on such law. So all the needs are there. It needs to be implemented on the real life. So it starts, the law starts with independent electric regulator giving all its power and then it moves to the activities where they have to be unbundled with a focus on the transmission system operator and then a focus on the market and the different phases and who will be responsible. It has a dispute resolution mechanism which is really important for such market and for different players to have. Uh, the guarantee of origin is emphasized even here. There are energy efficiency targets and energy efficiency requirements, tariff and tariff reform, and all what is related to the subsidies are illustrated in the law and its secondary legislations and even the network charges. So what are the outcomes of this? Next, please. The outcomes is now is that we have a tariff methodology, clear tariff methodology, a tariff reform program which is declared, network charges methodology, a dispute resolution committee, and public hearing and public consultation regulation. But of course there are a lot more to be done within the electricity law to achieve more regulatory frameworks for the uh, private investments, not only for the renewable energy but for all the activities all the generation activities as well as the distribution activities. Next, please. Then, after this, we can see that there are opportunities in the uh, in Egypt. Like Now, after all this has been accomplished, the demand is there because people now understand the importance of renewable energy as well as the green products. Green policies are taking place and uh, if you heard that we currently have a waste to energy uh, a presidential a prime minister decree as well a waste as well as a waste to energy law uh, so there are mature investors that are ready to work with this uh, thinking of the green as well consumers are more vulnerable to the market because they currently understand that there are private investments which was uh, a great obstacle in the uh, in the past uh, financiers now understand the market's investment uh, incentives, challenges and opportunities. And if you, uh, if you are following up with the current, uh, with the current projects that is taking place everywhere in Egypt, you will find there are, that there are new communities, new industrial zones and new agricultural zones. It means more demand is there. So if we're going to the next slide, please. Uh, we will see that the surplus of energy will not last forever uh, because of the, uh, the such expansions in all the communities and all the uh, infrastructures, the industries and economical uh, uh, activities in Egypt. And in addition to that, transmission and distribution infrastructure investments are needed. Uh, you have illustrated that, but uh, I, I, I can say that there will be a presentation that will illustrate that there are a lot of work happening on this area to evacuate renewable energy and absorb it as well. Uh, balanced regulation is a great challenge in such transitional phase to move from transitional phase to the first market phase. So yes, we have an electricity law, we have regulations, but that creates more challenges for regulator because it, it's the one who's facing all the stakeholders and have to uh, to take care of all their uh, benefits and challenges on the market. Then, uh, as we've heard, uh, uh, the, ministry of, uh, the Minister of Electricity uh, has declared that there are uh, new targets and those new targets are, of course, according to the new situation. So a revised strategy, a revised declared strategy is, is a great opportunity for all the stakeholders 
to uh, rearrange their uh, uh, their appetite, their look for the future. Uh, it's really important as well to have a real independent transmission system operator. They are currently having uh, their own board of directors, but unbundling means more than that. So the unbundling of a TSO is a must for a coming uh, fair uh, and implementable work market. Uh, transfer prices the, between the different activities of, uh, of, of electricity is under they are they are currently under processing the regulator is working on them and that will create fair uh, fair uh, position for private investors and will lead to better uh, segmentation of the uh, for the electricity market a uh, question here is when is are we going to work for unbundled activities for the distribution uh, system are we going to have DSOs or not especially we uh, as we are working on different national control centers and that will enable different distribution companies to work as DSOs leaving the activity so the service itself for private as well next I will finish my presentation with a, a, a question for the future investment and I think most of us are talking the same language here in Egypt as well as in Africa and everywhere. Uh, if we are, if you want to leave a finger thumb here, are we going to have laws and regulations for public private partnership that would allow uh, better performance for public and better opportunities for private and move to a next era for the uh, infrastructure development here. Uh, distributed generation is a great question. It's already started as a market. We have a lot of off-grades areas that are under development, starting with the agricultural uh, projects. So that leads to the microgrades regulations that needs to be in place for making such projects profitable and incentivize them not only for the electricity investments, but for the other investments to be more uh, profitable and more attractive and to uh, affect the other economical issues in uh, the country uh, expansion plans uh, to, to, to be uh, implemented and to work. Uh, thank you. I hope I didn't take a long time. And thank you, Salma very much for your efficiency in presenting your ideas. Actually, uh, Salma tackled two points which we received some questions about it. One of them is uh, renewable energy is that extend to include waste to energy. Uh, uh, Salma uh, mentioned uh, that there is a ready feed-in tariff for waste to energy. According to WAMRA, uh, which is Waste Management Regulatory Agency, there is opportunity of one billion dollar for waste to energy projects and as uh, engineer have pointed out there is 50 uh, company already pre-qualified for uh, the feed-in tariff projects but Salma ended her presentation with a question to us we would like maybe refer back the question to you which is basically for distributed generation we received some questions about distributed generation status of net, met net metering and how this will develop in future so be prepared to get this question <laughs> in our QA session. Now we will switch quite rapidly to uh, our next speaker, Engineer uh, Iman Rashad. Uh, Engineer Iman Rashad is the head of the sector for private power projects at the Egyptian Electricity Transmission Company, which is the Egyptian TSO. With more than 30 years of experience, Engineer Iman was involved in many competitive biddings for BOO projects in both solar and wind. Our responsibilities include preparation of the bidding documents, pre-qualification, pre-qualifying the bidders, analysis of the submitted offers, negotiation with the solicited bidder, and contracting with the selected bidder. Along her work, she worked with many international consultants whom offered support to 
EETC, Egyptian Electricity Transmission Company, in these projects. She was involved in Bin Ban uh, Solar Project Complex. Uh, also, she was involved in uh, many large wind projects which were developed by the private sector. Engineer Iman represented the power sector in Egypt in many international and uh, national conferences and efforts. Engineer Iman, the floor is yours. I appreciate if we can present within 10 minutes. Engineer Iman? Okay. Yes. Yes, please. The floor is yours. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Hafez, and thanks for this for um, uh, Africa for this opportunity. And it's a great pleasure for me to participate in such an event. And thanks for my colleagues from Egypt because they make my mission much easier. They covered a lot of information during their presentation. Uh, next, next, please. Uh, I have uh, to, uh, to overview on ETC itself. ETC is a state-owned company under the law of Egypt, and uh, the vision of ETC to be a world-class electricity transmission company and leading in Middle East and Africa. As a mission for ETC to provide reliable and efficient and effective electricity transmission and promotes the power trade for filling, for filling the socio and the economic needs. Extend over the governor, uh, governorates in Egypt and the labor capacity more than 31,000 employees. Next, please. ETC services to manage, operate, and the maintenance of electrical energy transmission network in all over Egypt, regulating the loads movement in the network for the high and uh, extreme voltage levels through both of national and regional control centers. Purchasing the produced electricity from power generation plants and selling it back to consumer. Even this uh, generation plans uh, is governmental or uh, uh, belonging to the private sector. Development of electrical energy projects on different voltage levels, even the uh, substations and the transmission lines of projects. Next, please. ETC key roles in renewable. ETC act as a sole buyer of electricity in Egypt according to its needs. Uh, its focal points between private sector and all concerning uh, governmental authorities as HEC in Aurea Egyptera to develop their renewable projects. Uh, it collaborates with HEC and Aurea to implement the uh, target for renewable. Evaluate periodically the status of power generation capacity in terms of demand and uh, planned strategies target. And then announcement for the competitive tenders uh, for selecting the most qualified developers to award uh, to develop the, the projects, especially in renewable, as engineer Hafez uh, said. Implementing the different scheme to serve the uh, different investor segments. Next, please. As we see, it's a focal point between all authorities, including the Ministry of Finance and also in the Ministry of Environment. Next. Uh, what is the target strategy objectives for energy and especially for uh, ETC? Energy security uh, to less the reliance on fossil fuels to avoid 
the uh, effect of these fossil fuels and to promote uh, renewable energy uh, which has positive impact from environmental aspects. Uh, promote the private sector participation, especially in renewable. Next, please. As my colleagues uh, illustrate the renewable strategy to reach 20 percentage uh, from the mixed generation uh, till 2022 uh, and uh, and 42 percentage uh, in 2035 how to reach uh, to satisfy this strategy especially in renewable uh, to uh, repre represent the private sector more than 67 percentage of that project so we can see uh, the role of private sector private sector considers considers as the main partner for implementing the renewable energy projects in egypt uh, if you can see what is the role of etc to satisfy this strategy with private sector etc responsible for implementing these projects with private sector. Uh, ETC uh, established uh, a department in 2008 to be responsible uh, to manage this kind of projects with private sector and uh, started the journey from 2009 with the first BO wind projects. Uh, as my colleague uh, Ihab represent in uh, his presentation, ATC uh, did a great effort uh, in the negotiations with uh, the developers to reach the competitive prices even in wind and in uh, solar projects which implemented in BOO scheme and we expect to reach much less prices in the future, inshallah. ATC signed a lot of BBAs, uh, Barber Shoes Agreement, with many developers uh, in uh, feed and tariff uh, scheme and in, BO, and in BOO projects, and also the connection agreements uh, to evacuate this uh, generation to the grid uh, and the ETC is involved in the sovereign guarantee agreements with Ministry of Finance. Next please. We can tackle now the interconnection with neighboring countries which ETC is responsible for. As you know Egypt is a hub uh, in the world and especially in electrical uh, energy connections uh, projects from uh, west, from east, from uh, north and south. ETC started the connection with Sudan uh, from uh, south and completing the implementation of Sudan con connecting the line uh, 220 kV with a length about 100 km and the trial operation of a capacity of 50 megawatt is started and another 50 mega uh, can be at the end of this year. The plan to increase to, to uh, 240 megawatt with Sudan inshallah in the future. With Saudi Electrical, with Saudi uh, uh, Arabian, uh, Egypt uh, is planned to exchange a capacity of uh, 3,000 megawatt between uh, Egypt and the Saudi. And uh, the two countries will use the high voltage DC transmission technology uh, on 500 kV. Next, please. Next, already Egypt is connected with Jordan uh, from uh, west and the study was prepared 
to raise the current capacity from 450 megawatt to be 2000 uh, megawatt. And that allows a possibility for energy exportation to Lebanon, Syria, and the Iraq via Jordan. Uh, the next uh, electrical connection uh, with Libyan and it's already connected uh, via 220 kV voltage line and uh, the, the length about two, uh, 255 kilometer and it will upgrade it to use the 500 kV transmission line to support this interconnection. Next, please. Uh, Egypt, is inten uh, Egypt intends to connect with Europe uh, via 2,000 megawatt, and that via Egypt to Cyprus and from there to Greece, thus providing connection from the Egyptian grid to the European electricity grid. And that interconnection will use direct current high voltage uh, DC technology. Next, please. Uh, as, as my colleagues illustrated, uh, there is some projects, BV projects connected already to the grid about uh, uh, 1.5 giga, and uh, we have uh, about one giga BOO projects in pipelines. That includes the 600 uh, auction mechanism. The 600 auction mechanism, uh, the status of it now, uh, we will start with uh, 200 as the first phase and complete the two phases um, uh, yearly. Uh, this 200 uh, megawatt in auction uh, mechanism now, we are, uh, uh, we, we, we are now progressing with the IFC consultant to uh, uh, conclude the uh, RFB document to be, to be uh, tendered to the uh, pre-qualified developers, uh, which are uh, about 18 consortium international consortium. And, and Egypt considered that mechanism is a new mechanism to, to be done. Uh, we, we tried the feed and tariff, we tried the competitive bid. We uh, consider the auction uh, as some kind, it's related to a competitive bid, but in new techniques. Um, the 100 megawatt CSB now under study uh, with the international consultant to see even it will be pure S, uh, CSB or we can use the hybrid. The wind uh, uh, project, the 250 megawatts connected already to the grid and uh, another 250 megawatts under construction and uh, about uh, 1.7 giga in pipelines. Based on direct agreements and the cabinet uh, uh, de uh, declarement or uh, agreements. How can ETC connect these renewable projects uh, to the grid? Uh, ETC usually enforce the grid through constructing new substations and the transmission lines, which are the interconnection works on different KV levels to evacuate the energy generated from renewable wind and solar, or also to uh, the, the generated uh, electricity from conventional. Even these projects are governmental or private. Uh, the wind projects implemented in Gulf of Seuss or solar projects implemented in Aswan and Komombu. Uh, we, 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 we already done uh, um, uh, four substation and the transmission line and the uh, underground the cables and the infrastructure uh, for Bimban projects. And the same 
for Gulf of South projects uh, for wind. The future wind and solar projects will, inshallah, will be in West and the East uh, Nile. It is conducted also to evacuate these projects, a technical cost, even grid or wind or solar. And now we are developing these grids with Egyptera uh, for the future bro uh, uh, projects. The renewable projects especially should be complied with this cause uh, at the point of common coupling to be connected to the grid, as you know, because this renewable energy is uh, considered as variant uh, sub, uh, uh, sources. So uh, the signed agreement with the developers already include all technical consid uh, uh, considerations about connecting these projects to the grid and uh, already in Bimban, in the 1.5 gigawatt connected to the project or the forest wind BOO uh, project uh, connected to the grid, we uh, um, studied the grid, uh, the grid code compliance and the wind and the solar codes the compliance with the, with the developers uh, during the testing and the commissioning and before connecting to the grid. Next, please. Yani, as you know, Egypt has uh, yani, uh, uh, done a great uh, uh, effort in the last five years, especially in renewable and the Egypt uh, solar program in Bimban won the Global Award for Multilateral Project Finance Deal uh, in 2018. Thank you very much. I tried to uh, cover uh, quickly. And uh, Thank you man, very much for your uh, kind uh, containment with the time. I think uh, I need to move uh, directly. Uh, first, uh, Ilaria, if you could allow us for an additional 15 minutes, uh, but uh, before moving, Jinieri man, please think about, uh, we received two questions. One of them is about canceling some of the tenders uh, recently by EETC and what kind of a mixed signal this could give. Uh, also, a second question about is within the plan of uh, EETC to have uh, a hybrid PVCSP plants or not? When we come to the okay. Q&A session, please, we need re to respond. Uh, I okay. move to uh, Elaria. We could have an, uh, 15 minutes more. Uh, yes, no problem. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, I uh, move to uh, Engineer Mohammed Al Hefnawi. Engineer Mohammed Al Hefnawi has uh, an engineering degree in electrical power engineering as well as a master degree MBA from Maastricht School of Management. Uh, Mr. Hefnawi uh, uh, has uh, 18 years of experience in electrical power and automation engineering with Schneider Electric. He started his career in the design office, then moved to tendering projects management, project management, uh, execution, uh, sales management of different market segments inside and outside Egypt, and most recently marketing. He is currently Power System Marketing Director of Schneider Electric, responsible for uh, Northeast Africa and Levant countries, and also leading for the past four years a distribution control center project in Asia. Mr. Uh, now the floor is yours. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Hafiz, for this uh, introduction. And thanks to the whole team of uh, RAS for Africa for organizing uh, the event. It's a pleasure to be with you uh, today. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the transformation that is taking place in Egypt, in Egypt's distribution network, from being a conventional grid to a smart uh, uh, grid. But first, let me uh, give you an overview about Schneider Electric presence uh, in Egypt. Uh, we have been present in Egypt for more than 30 years now, and we are actually proud uh, to be present in Egypt. Uh, the company's name was first uh, called MG, uh, which is Egyptian Manufacturing uh, Group, and then Group Schneider. 
and then Schneider uh, Electric. Uh, the cumulative investments Schneider has done uh, during those uh, 30 years are nearly 240 million euro. We even increased uh, our capital uh, in 2018 uh, by 20 million euro. This is to foster our presence in the country. Uh, we are more, we are almost 1,700 employees uh, uh, in Egypt. We have uh, a regional uh, headquarter covering Egypt, uh, Sudan, Libya, uh, Malta, Jordan, and uh, Lebanon. We have a regional execution center covering uh, the MIA zone, Middle East and Africa. We have a regional factory in Badri city, and we have a new uh, distribution center in 10th of Ramadan city. Uh, next slide, please. The story of uh, distribution control uh, centers, uh, actually, uh, it began uh, in 2014 when Egypt uh, at that time had a deficit of almost three gigawatts in the generated uh, power. At that time, the country, uh, the government, the Ministry of Electricity, took the decision to invest in what is called emergency plan uh, uh, to minimize the gap between uh, the generated power and the actual consumption. Uh, and also at that time, it was decided to have uh, to adopt a strategy of, uh, of, uh, of a mix uh, of uh, production of electricity between conventional uh, resources and renewable resources like uh, Ben Ban uh, Solar Park and other wind projects that took place uh, since then. Uh, after these uh, investments, <clears throat> after these huge investments in both uh, renewables and conventional generation substations, uh, investments in both transmission and distribution uh, networks took uh, place. And it was then essential uh, to monitor and control the growing uh, networks in an intelligent, efficient, uh, and centralized uh, way. Uh, uh, we started uh, four years ago a journey with the holding company of electricity, with the different distribution uh, companies. Uh, we first conducted a seminar where we brought our global expertise uh, of smart grid. This was done early 2017. Uh, uh, and since then, but, uh, and after that time, we had, uh, we, we uh, 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 the, uh, the, the, the electricity holding company uh, had a tender uh, of 14 control centers where we were invited uh, to participate in this tender with other international uh, vendors. Uh, there were several rounds of, uh, of technical and commercial negotiations. Uh, we were going to get awarded by six control centers at that uh, time. Uh, however, the Ministry of Electricity took a decision to cancel uh, this, ta uh, this uh, tender because at that time they thought that uh, the, the grid is not yet ready uh, to move from very being, uh, from being very conventional to uh, and adopt such sophisticated and smart uh, technologies. Uh, they then took some time to reinforce and modernize uh, uh, the network. Uh, they launched then a tender uh, for only five control centers out of the previous standard uh, 14. Uh, they were actually the most modern among uh, the 14. It was two in North Cairo, two in South Cairo, and one in Alexandria. We also participated in that one. Uh, this time it was with the involvement of international consultants, as well as the armament authority, uh, several rounds of technical and commercial uh, negotiations, extensive one, ones, uh, auctions, reverse auctions. And finally we came uh, the winner of four out of these tendered distribution control uh, centers. And then we had the pleasure uh, to meet His Excellency, uh, the President of Egypt, uh, uh, where we agreed and negotiated the execution of 10 additional uh, ones. Uh, 
Next slide, please. This, uh, for Egypt control centers, Egypt has a national control center. Uh, uh, connected to this national control center, there is there are seven regional control centers. Some of them are already built, and some of them are being uh, to be built. Uh, we have nine distribution companies. This is the that uh, manages the distribution uh, grid, and there is uh, a program of having 47 control centers uh, for these distribution companies. Uh, next slide, please. This illustrates the connection and the relation between the national control center and the seven regional control centers, and then the nine distribution companies. The nine distribution companies for each, there is a number of control centers to be established. And this is the, the, the program of uh, having control centers uh, and transforming the network from being conventional to a smart one. Next slide, please. This uh, is the map of the 47 uh, control centers. Where are, where are they? Will where will they be located uh, in Egypt? Uh, we are now executing. We have the privilege, and the, we are honored to. Uh, uh, to execute the first four of them, two in North Cairo, new in in, uh, in New Cairo, in Nasri City, two in South Cairo, in six of October, and uh, uh, Doki. Uh, we will then be executing what we call uh, phase two. In uh, in uh, they are marked in in blue: Heliopolis, Alexandria Middle. Uh, we have also. Uh, Sharm el Sheikh, uh, 10th of Ramadan city. We have uh, Alexandria, uh, we have Minya. So these are the next five to be done. And then we have a, thir a third lot of DCCs uh, to establish these in in uh, in Abur in Khanka, in uh, Hergada Smaaliya, Garbaya Munufiya, 26th of July. There is also a program of establishing other DCCs as a part of these 47 DCCs, uh, and this and this is being financed by uh, JIC. Uh, next slide, please. This is the typical uh, distribution control center uh, scope. So uh, the distribution control center uh, is about full fledged three layers, uh, uh, three layers. What we call inside of Schneider eco structure grid the first layer of products are all connected products they are like the smart units the smart uh, relays the smart auto reclosures uh, the smart rmus for example will be installed inside thousands of kiosks that are scattered uh, across all over all the streets all over uh, egypt uh, switch gears and the substations whether it's in the distribution or the transmission network. These will be connected to the, what is called geographical information system layer that maps both the high voltage and low voltage sides uh, of the network. Uh, the GIS will be integrated with the advanced distribution management system that is fully responsible about uh, planning, uh, controlling, monitoring, uh, the intelligence of the system. This is the brain of the system, both by the, the layer of automation, the layer of software, the layer of analytics, and the connected products that are in the field will be connected by means of telecommunication, uh, like 3G, 4G uh, routers, and also uh, RF antennas with UHF and VHF. Uh, Thank you. I've, I've, I've tried as much as possible to make it quick uh, to compensate the time. Uh, yeah, Hassan, I appreciate very much sticking with the time. Now we go to come to the uh, question session. Actually, we received a lot of questions. I'll start uh, to, with Hassan. Uh, actually, we received a question about uh, uh, Medric contributions, a challenge Medric uh, 
facing regarding harmonizing different regulatory frameworks, keeping in mind the specifically in the South Mediterranean, the challenge between sovereignty and uh, 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 harmonization of regulations. What approach of uh, MEDREG in dealing with this? Okay, Havas, thank you very much. It's a very important and uh, very crucial question. It means that if we are saying that harmonization, it doesn't mean that they have to adapt the same regulation that the European Union has. And the European Union countries has been implementing this regulation since more than 20 years. But we are talking on the major and main, main, uh, uh, main issues that can ensure the integration and interoperability of the countries with each other. So basically, we are talking about, first and foremost, the basic technical rules. So this is crucial. Otherwise, if you do not harmonize these basic technical rules with each other, you cannot basically create a kind of uh, energy exchange between the countries. So, of course, uh, with harmonization, we also means that uh, to really uh, uh, agree on a kind of common uh, legislation that can allow each country to integrate with each other. So it doesn't mean that each country has to implement the same identical regulation or uh, the same uh, laws in their own respected countries but at least to agree on a common of common uh, uh, legislation that can allow them to exchange their energy. Okay, thank you, Hassan. I think this is shows how uh, the merit of MEDREC as a bottom-up approach, which chart to exchange exactly. best practices and uh, make a kind of common understanding. Uh, we have uh, several questions to engineer. We have uh, one of them about the surplus how this surplus might affect the development of renewable energy uh, in Egypt. Uh, so how it will affect the plans for developing renewable energy? Yeah, yes, yes, ah, yes. yes. Uh, okay, yani, yani. how to start and develop a new project and the, at the same time we have a, a reserve or a surplus uh, sometime uh, like that so if we think yes our plans is go but before two years or three years ago it our plan it uh, went uh, very fast but now we are talking slow what our the, the, the current situation for the uh, the reserve and the grid also what about the effect of covid COVID-19 also, what about the market in Egypt? It will be international also and local in Egypt. So it will be effective, negative or um, or positive for that. So yani, not logic to start and to accelerate our plan to implement a new project or to develop a new renewable project. And in the same time, we have a surplus, we have a yani, how to do that. So everything yani, now go to slowly, we waiting because it's not our problem as a, a supply side. We talk about the demand side in the, yani it's a, a equation between supply and the demand. What about the demand side now in Egypt? We need to accelerate the demand, to increase the demand for the electricity in Egypt first. And after that, we are ready to accelerate. We have a plan, we have a, as the engineer, Iman, mentioned and you uh, dr Havas also mentioned we have a plan and also yeah, we can start very fast but it will must be based on the demand side if there is a demand side increase the surplus or the reserve will be decreased and accordingly we need to add new power plant this is what is the current situation okay i think this is uh, yani uh, demand side management include load building and as you uh, mentioned in your presentation that electric mobility uh, is a demanding sector furthermore through the strategy it shows that least cost is with adding more renewable and not relying on conventional capacity we have another question is that wind uh, offshore wind is part of the scope of wind development projects in egypt 
as I mentioned before, we have a 95% from the total land of Egypt is desert. And our promising data and uh, our promising areas and the studies already, we have enough land for the onshore and until now. Why I go to, to offshore and at the same time I have offshore uh, and I have uh, onshore now. So uh, the priority at that time for the onshore wind farms. So maybe in the future we can, yani, uh, after you can expect maybe the decrease of the cost and the technologies itself. But for it now we are talking on onshore wind farms. Okay, uh, a final question is basically about the uh, custom duties. Recently, it shows that the custom duties for PV become 2%, while, as the question said, it was 0%. Would you confirm this or not? Yeah, it's 2% because it first was 0% uh, for Euro um, bro, uh, products, for Euro 1 products. It uh, was European uh, products, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yes. But now all of them. Yes, all, all of the products now for PV is 2% now. Okay, thank you. I switch to uh, Ricardo. Actually, Ricardo, you raised the question about uh, the uh, corporate PPA. Uh, but uh, is the credit of the off-taker is might be a challenge for this type of contract. Furthermore, is that uh, corporate PPA could be developed without developing a market, uh, a liberalized uh, electricity market. And what's going to happen if the customer defaulted or if there is a surplus capacity at the producer? What will be the case? Um, yes. Uh, so the the one of the challenges for uh, a developer, for sure, is to find. Uh, a balance between uh, a corporate buyer's demand and uh, the project availability in terms of uh, meeting what are uh, the bankability requirements. So is uh, always um, say a process of, of balancing the interest of uh, what will be your client, to find a client with a good corporate uh, uh, creditworthiness on the other side, which will uh, somehow uh, will mitigate the risk of a default of the taker there. Um, on the other side, uh, of course, uh, is a matter of uh, availability of financing for these kind of projects, which again, as I mentioned before, probably in a scenario where uh, there is so reluctance sometimes to uh, uh, to take a risk, uh, uh, looking for uh, you know on on. Uh, a governmental side because the government is not going to provide uh, probably further uh, sovereign guarantees um the the a corporate ppa seems to be you know the the the, the real the good tools so in terms of risk of default uh, uh, of the of taker i guess i think that if the project is well if first of all if the legal framework is clear um if uh, um, there is not, let's say, uh, also in the, or the other in the market, there is uh, uh, a convenience to enter uh, in order to secure your energy with a PPA. Um, you know, the risk of uh, default of the taker, in my view, is something that you can uh, you can manage uh, there. Um, the, 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 the good, uh, the flexibility of the corporate PPA is that is like a suit that you can. Uh, uh, have uh, and and uh, you know organize on, on your on uh, I mean to, to define. For instance, uh, you can also share uh, the risk of the faulting of the taker by having more of takers, so multiple of takers and uh, with a PPA. So there is a lot of flexibility there. But the starting point is uh, to have a regulation that really clarify how these uh, tools is uh, is uh, how this possibility is really incorporated uh, in, in in the in the in the legal framework in egypt um and uh, i will say another thing that maybe i didn't mention but it's something that you know in, in my view also the government should uh, should really sponsor because it is uh, it can uh, probably allow the 
uh, the country to, to meet uh, more quicker the, the targets of renewables because it's a tool which, again, if there is a good legal framework, really can speed up the process to, 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 to achieve your targets there. Do you think that if uh, ETC, for example, offer a backup contract in case of customer defaulted or uh, there is a surplus, is that could help in promoting this corporate uh, PPA? I think it will help, but again, um, I, I will, as a foreign investor, I will, uh, you know, the first things which I'm, I will expect uh, from a foreign investor is to look uh, to the market, to look to the industries. And if you really can do, a, 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 you can put a, a corporate PPA really on a bilateral basis, even without the support of, you know, from a governmental authority, if there are the, 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 the basics there, um, you know, may, maybe it's not even needed, but of course, in other scenario, this will, will, will be a tool to help uh, to develop this kind of product. Okay, thank you very much. I will switch to uh, Salma. Uh, I think, Salma, we pose a question, you raise it yourself, which was about distributed generation and the status so far of net metering and what could be done in order to stimulate the distributed generation market. Okay, thanks, Dr. Hafiz, for giving me an opportunity to uh, illustrate uh, about my thoughts on this. Uh, well, there is, uh, first let's say there is a big room for distributed generation, not only because the uh, large off-grid projects that currently uh, under construction, uh, which we might see the distributed generation working even before the legislations are there, uh, but to make it more uh, attractive, we have to work on this. Uh, the second issue here is uh, uh, two main issues. Uh, first issue is to have the appropriate regulatory framework for that, that will incentivize this. Uh, as I know that uh, there are some kind of energy efficiency targets for, uh, for, uh, for uh, renewable energy small projects. So that could work uh, within uh, a clear regulatory framework to incentivize that. Uh, the other thing is the grid itself and how uh, they will uh, set uh, the, the, the technical uh, guidelines and the technical uh, requirements from distributed generation uh, uh, facilities uh, in order to have a stable uh, network uh, in there. Uh, of course, uh, distributed generation uh, would work with the microgrids as well, uh, but then uh, uh, how about if such microgrids, if such microgrids are going to be connected to the macrogrids, and how can we guide the investors uh, with the appropriate technical solutions before they establish it, and it become a, a problem in the future if they are not going to be connected? And we have to think of it in in another form, like if we currently have a microgrids that will uh, give us uh, a, a cost opportunity that we do not have to invest in uh, transmission uh, cabling, transmission facilities, and having uh, greater losses in the grid. So from that perspective, a regulatory framework is, is, is needed for distributed generation, a simple scheme, uh, very incentivizing, and of course, uh, some kind of technical requirements for that to be declared and to be approved by uh, all the, uh, the grids. Uh, the distribution companies as well as uh, transmission companies. Uh, but then we have to uh, pay great attention that this is currently working. So we have to be faster than the investors in developing such regulations in technical aspects before <laughs> such expansions are reached by the, uh, the grid itself. So these okay. are my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question about uh, guarantee of origin certificate. Basically, I was just uh, referring a master's degree on uh, 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 what you call it, uh, RE100, which is an initiative, international initiative for many companies to achieve 100% renewable energy by 
2050. And out of the analysis they do with that, around 50, close to 50 percent, uh, companies satisfy their need from renewable energy through purchasing certificates. And 30 percent through corporate, or 30, 35 percent corporate PPAs, and around 11 percent uh, through uh, utility offered uh, renewable energy contracts and minor was basically self-generation. So what's held guarantee of origin certificate from being activated in the Egyptian market specifically, as you mentioned, it's a part of uh, the law. Uh, let's say here, uh, yes, it's illustrated in the law. And uh, I think here, uh, what we are thinking of is how to address that to the uh, consumers itself and how to, uh, be, because before even illustrating any regulations, you have to gather the right data from the uh, right stakeholders. And the main stakeholders for the go here is the customers themselves with the different segments of them, either industrials or small, uh, even small customers. So. Uh, the regulations were, uh, were, were, were developed, but there was no participation of the stakeholders themselves. And such participation is really important, not only from the customers, but from the environmental side as well, to make the things working on the right direction. Uh, a market, by a way or another, needs to be introduced here, uh, so everyone understand how GO is a market. Green products has to have a, a market uh, in the national level before the international level, uh, as well as the international market itself. So yes, some companies need the green uh, products, but the demand is not clear on that. Uh, the other thing is that guarantee of origin requires to have a quota by a way or another on the customers themselves. So to start the, the, the issuance of it. So but let's say that a dialogue has to be considered here. Yes, Dr. I think that creating some kind of physical and soft incentives like branding, cleaner production, green tourism, or physical incentives like tax credit could help in people to yes. demand for this guarantee of origin certificate? Yes, sure. That's, that's really important. And, and thank you for, uh, for uh, complimenting my words here because as i said environmental ministry started talking uh, green but we did not have uh, tax credits carbon food carbon credits uh, regulations uh, uh, which, is, which are tradable uh, so you need to have environmental regulations in addition to the electrical reg electricity regulations to make the things work and to, fa to foster the demand for this and after uh, gathering the data you would we would have the 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 real uh let's say a forecasted demand for such go and a forecasted supply uh, that is already there uh, and to know the priority for the environmental ministry for the projects uh, which technology uh, is it for because the one which was developed is for solar energy but it might go also for waste to energy we do not know uh, the, the technologies that will uh, work with the guarantee of origin uh, the market moved a lot since we, we since we worked on that uh, but i think this is the next and it has to be there because green uh, is the the, the biggest uh, hot topic here in egypt nowadays okay thank you selma uh, I move to Engineer Iman. Uh, we posed two question to one of them about the cancelled tender and uh, is that could create a kind of a mixed signal or what was the reason for that? And a second question was about uh, uh, is within the scope of EETC to tender for uh, a hybrid plants, PV CSPs like what has been developed in Emirates uh, in the coming uh, round? Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Hafiz. Regarding the cancelling of the West of Nile projects, it was um, uh, like a debate. Uh, and uh, um, uh, the decision was uh, subject to uh, some consultations, from, especially from 
legal. Why? Uh, because, uh, as you know, uh, these projects tendered in 2016. And at that time, the feed-in tariff was uh, established and uh, yani all developers and the international lenders and even the Egyptian uh, government was uh, concentrated or were concentrated in the feed-in tariff program. And that lead to delay these projects. So when uh, we uh, rethink to issue the final RFP, we have unfortunately the COVID-19 and the pandemic situation, and that lead to uh, decrease the demand, and we have surplus about uh, 20 giga. And as I have uh, mentioned. Uh, how can we uh, develop new projects now? And we have surplus about 20 giga. So the consultation come to uh, first to postpone, but postpone for wh uh, when uh, at time uh, some some consultation I think as uh, to be credible. Uh, HC can cancel this project at this time and it may reissue it again on the same shortlisted bidders when the situation is getting better regarding the issue of demand and the supply. So okay. that is the reason and oh, the already we, uh, we have a promise that you're going to reissue this cancelled bets. <laughs> uh, we sent, we sent, uh, uh, personally, I hope that I was very sad about cancelling these projects because it's it's our effort. But we already sent to the shortlisted bidder uh, based on the uh, Excellency uh, Minister that when we reissue the bidder, it was based on the uh, announced shortlisted bidders. To, uh, I to you will not need to be uh, requalified, but for sure you will open for newcomers for sure at that time. Yeah, uh, I think so. I think so because I I I I expect I expect it will not be uh, within the upcoming two years. Yeah, it okay. will not be. Beautiful. Will not be within the coming two years, but after two years, we ah, expect something will come. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. Uh, second question about the hybrid uh, PVCSP. Is it part of the scope to have it? Uh, because yes. you mentioned that you're going to tender uh, a CSP plan. Uh, yes. Is that yes. Good account to hybridize PVCSP? Yes, we, we had a confirmation after cancelling the projects of Houston Line, including the 100 CSB BOO project, uh, confirmation to reach an international consultant to work with them uh, to be ready for conducting the RFB uh, for the CSB as it's not matured in Egypt as a document. We haven't any matured document or bankable BBAs or, uh, or connection agreement for the CSB technology right now. So we are in, uh, we will, uh, yani, inshallah, in the, uh, expect uh, at the uh, beginning of uh, the uh, the year, the next year, because this this international consultant uh, uh, financed by grant from the EBRD, so we'll continue with work with that consultant to maintain the document, the RFB, even in pure CSB or hybrid CSB uh, with BV based on international experience and also the coming tariff for it will be better to be a pure CSB or to be hybrid with BV uh, to reduce the, uh, the tariff. And as okay. you know, Dr.
office, the main issue for ATC to reduce the tariff for contracting with the uh, renewable projects. Very good. Uh, a question, last but not least, for sure, uh, Engineer Mohammed Hefnawi. Uh, you showed some activities of Schneider, uh, but I think one of main activities of Schneider is also local manufacturing. Basically, uh, Renewable energy could add more externalities, specifically if you introduce to make technology transfer for local manufacturing. What's the plan of Schneider for local manufacturing for equipment, which could help for localizing renewable energy project in Egypt? Danny, we see the market of Egypt as uh, very uh, promising. We have uh, we see lots of opportunities from very normal, basic, conventional products and solutions to the most sophisticated high-tech uh, projects like uh, the example I just showed of uh, distribution control uh, centers. So depending on the, on the future opportunities, depending on the trend, depending uh, uh, on let's, lots of several uh, factors, we, uh, we, uh, we uh, we put all of that, all of this into our strategy of localization. But definitely, we have a big uh, regional uh, plant. Okay, this regional plant is not only serving Egypt; it's so serving the whole region, Africa, Middle East. So, uh, so depending on the opportunities in that uh, region, we use this uh, center, we use this uh, equipment uh, unit uh, to localize. We have several uh, things in our strategy we have several initiatives in our strategy for the next years uh, to come uh, for localization so uh, lots lots of opportunities in different domains in different fields definitely depending uh, where we see ourselves uh, competitive in the market whether depending depending on the solution requested depending on the product whether it's a high-tech solution whether it's it's a very basic one so depending on all these factors uh, we increase our local presence but i can assure you that we have this intention as we are doing since uh, last the last years we increased our capital in 2018 20 million euro so we do have this intention strategic intention for the next years to come even in the in the control centers project we have this intention to increase the localization level in the next lots to come so uh, yes okay thank you i think we have just received last minutes two questions which is i could combine it one question is about when the EETC will be transferred into TSO uh, unbundled from the holding company. And another question, which is very much related to uh, the previous one, which is uh, date for uh, starting the liberalized market. I would say that as the government has promised to uh, for a tariff for the next five years, so it's not expected for a liberalized market to, to start before 2025. And over this period, sure, TSO should be established so preparation should take place within the coming five years and already the law has been amended and confirmed that the 2025 uh, date uh, so they extended from eight years which was promised in the law issued in 2015 to 10 years so added two years so if i allow myself to answer these questions so uh, i hope this covers these two questions by the end, and uh, sorry for keeping you too late, I would like to thank all of you, thank our panelists for their uh, thoughts and excellent presentation. Uh, thanks for our attendees. And for sure, I believe the role of excellent presentation helped to keep our attendees waiting to the end. And for sure, by the end, I would like to thank both Roberto and Elaria for her effort and support, as well as Fabio for managing the IT services and uh, a hope for next meeting for rest for mind. Elaria, the floor is yours. Maybe, can I just compliment something with your permission? Yes, sure, Hassan, please. Okay, thank you very much. I mean, uh, given that the uh, majority of the countries have already set a target uh, 
to move uh, to re full renewable energy by 2050 and 2060. So it means that uh, the conventional fuels will be out of our life. So in order to reach this target, we have to make sure that uh, there is a uh, co there is an uh, uh, coordination uh, between all stakeholders from the regulators policy makers and the system operators without a full coordination and cooperation with these three main stakeholders it is almost impossible to reach this target which will need the flexibility of the system uh, through the smart grids first of all and the harmonized regulation to have a full exchange of the energy and the direction of the policymakers. Thank you very much. I think with Thank this you, clear Hattari. vision by the end, I think this best things to close it. So, Elaria, please, floor is yours. I would like to thank uh, you very much, Afet, for your your excellent work as a uh, as a moderator and to have supported our audience with all the question. I would like to remind you that this, this, uh, this session has been recorded and we will find the video in the next few days in our Rest for Africa website. I would like to thank all the panelists for having selected such rich topics to be discussed and thank you uh, all the people who attended the, our event. I truly hope you will find we all found this event interesting and I hope, I hope to see you soon. Bye and thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.